want to do a backflip or shoot my guns in the air or wave to the crowd or flip my helmet off, it's fun, and it's just a game. Have fun, but play football. Reason, quarterback at Nebraska, will be back from Auburn. He looks like Bo Jackson. What they've done with him in the fall is cut his weight down so that he can make more long runs like this one right here. That's the only problem with Davis, but they've improved that situation a lot. Now, these are great players that play on great teams on television. And don't forget Ron Paulus, great player. Last year, Texas at Texas A&M. End of the season, Texas needs to be there. And both of those teams weren't undefeated playing that game. And then my favorite, Nebraska against Howard Snellenberg. So Bowden team must have had an excellent week of practice. Either that or the guy forgot who he voted for. Auburn is number six at USC, the consensus Pac-10 favorite. Tennessee, Notre Dame at number nine. And Ohio State, the impressive pounding of BC moves them into the top ten at number ten. Buckeyes now have two weeks off. Easy to pick a preseason top ten. Let's skip ahead now to the end of the regular season and talk about who's going to be on top going into the bowls. We tried to come up with a consensus top ten. Never going to happen. We can't have a consensus on anything. So give me each of your top five. Well, first I'll start with Nebraska. The reason I think Nebraska, the schemes at home, Auburn and Texas A&M are both coming off probation. They both got something to prove. I like that five. I like the names, but I don't like the order of that. Nebraska, the schedule, and Tommy Frazier, the plus. A&M, Texas A&M number two, defense and McElroy. At Florida State, Danny Cannell and Dunn in the backfield give them a great chance, but they play at Florida. Auburn, the offense will be powerful this year. And Penn State, Wally Richardson, the new quarterback, luckiest man in college football this season because he comes in with a great offensive line, Mike Archie at tailback, and tremendous wide receivers. He'll make them a good team. They'll make him good, therefore the team becomes solid. So you guys have the same five teams. Typically busy day when we continue. Pain is a part of two-a-day. No reason not to play. Injury's a different story. Continue to grow bigger and bigger, but then again, the job might be getting tougher and tougher. We showed you a day in the life of Schnellenberger and Davis. Now down to Auburn, where a typical day for Coach Terry Bowden begins with a practice in the pre-dawn mist and doesn't end until a late-night lullaby sung to his TV. We break, we'll go to PAT field goal. Let's go, let's go, let's go, we're moving somewhere! Get off the field! Yes. He, was he homesick or sick? He sees you one or the other. Homesick or sick or tired or discouraged? He is, he's probably discouraged, I'm sure he is. Don't you go anywhere, we'll get him. His dad will send him back one. He ain't gonna let him, he ain't gonna let him do nothing. I've, I've only had him go home three or four times in my day. That's a nice throw. Now, every, every time, Patrick, just like that. Bumps, bruises, pain is a part of two-a-days. No reason not to play. Injury's a different story. Pain is no reason not to come out here. We expect to be sore and tired, like I said, every single day till about Wednesday of game week. He was reading a book this morning on what kind of symptoms to show if you have a hernia. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She memorized it. No. Okay, All right, very good. Um, same kind of practice yesterday, I pretty much, I imagine, it's going to be a nice practice, I'm sure we'll probably bury some. That, oh, that was close. Ah, Take that guy, drive your legs. And that's old uh, Ryan Taylor. Drive your legs and drive them in the end zone. Hello, I'm Terry Bowden, head football coach at Auburn University. Be sure to listen to Auburn football on Rock 103, Columbus, Georgia. And while, uh, oh, no, no, okay, just, and you can cut, yeah. get it, okay? Uh, Okay, here we go. Eat in. Whether it's hot dogs, fresh luncheon meats, sausage and bacon, or a Ziegler ham, you can't beat the great, nah, -uh. I don't like that. You can't beat the great taste. I'm sorry, I'm thinking too much. Jordan, come tell me. Are you going bye bye too? Oh, look at your pretty hat. Aren't you pretty? Isn't that a pretty hat? What are you going to do at the lake? You going to play? You going to play with Maddie? Yeah. Maddie? Oh boy, that's gonna be fun, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 
George planned the way. I think he planned the way. He did. He got through and knocked both of them on. We can't have one bad snap. I'll tell you what. John Cooley, get your hands up under there. When you all talk about it, the best thing for you is to get back and play for a place where you, where you can play football and do things you want with people that you believe in you. You're right where you need to be. You just right now you're just doubting yourself and your situation. You don't need to do that. I mean, I'm just telling you, I mean, even though you do it, you gotta fight through it. I promise you. I mean, I've been a head coach 12 years and I've seen a lot of times. And I've and I've never discouraged a guy from if he had to leave, if it just wasn't it what didn't have it there. I just said, well, there maybe there's a level of football he can play, but there ain't no level below that you ought to be playing in now. And there ain't no program better than us that's gonna be a different situation. We want you here. And, we, and, I, and I guarantee we want you here, and we need you here. You're the kind of player we need to build the future of our football program. You know your Auburn football. You ask some good questions there. Secondary, let's talk about it. We've got Dale McGee, really our only returning starter. Good night, all you moonlight ladies. Rock up our sweet baby tunes. Deep greens and blues are the colors I choose. Won't you let me go down? Not a terrible voice considering he's just put in a 15-hour workday. He grew up knowing what it was all about, watching his dad. But it's good to know somebody as smooth as Terry still needs an occasional take two when he does a commercial. <laughs> We've seen three coaches now, the hard work they put in. Did you work that hard when you coached? Yeah, all coaches work that hard. And let me tell you something. Coaching was a privilege. because it has meaning to it and then wherever the alliance bowl falls into place that's where the other interesting ball game will fall all these other activities out there the other non-alliance games i think they'll just be kind of oh by the way we're playing as a reward for the players and what they did during the season mm -hmm. we've talked a few minutes we haven't mentioned the word playoff where do we stand on a playoff well i'll tell you a lot of the bowl guys figure that a playoff is dead that's what john junker said mm. the money with this new alliance system maybe persuading mm. a lot of folks the playoff is not the way to go what else is Man, we take them one at a time. We take them one at a time. And fellas, you did what you had to do now. You did what you had to do. I thought was that we got a great test. Defense, you got a great test tonight. And what's the only stat that matters? Scoring for defense. Scoring. Scoring defense. 13 points, and it should have been seven. Should have been. That's a great job, defense. Offense, we learned lesson day now. We all thank, we thank Steve Davis for that. They put nine people on the line, put the safeties across the line of scrimmage on the staff. Across the line. When they do that, it's the greatest compliment they can make to a back. Receivers, you came through, Pat. Offensive line, one sack that wasn't on y'all, it was Gator. One sack, not even on them. That's a great job, offense. Great job, West Coast. Oh. Right, now listen, listen, baby, 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 it just starts. It just starts now. We got a long ways to go. Kicking game, we had big, big return. We had missed some extra points. We missed a short yardage. We had as many bad things to happen tonight against a good team that cost us a ball game. Against a great game, we'll cost a ball. We're going to correct that. We're going to correct it. We'll come out and we'll get better. This is the Auburn football. What an opening day for the Tigers. A huge win over the Ole Miss Rebels at Jordan Hare before 85,000 folks. Coach, uh, just the way you wanted to start it, I would guess. Oh, my. I mean, so many people. I haven't seen a bigger crowd, a, a, a more excited, the loudest Tiger walk I've ever seen. What a great way to start the season. I'm proud. Our fans have really gotten into it very early, and we need you the entire season. We thank you. And, uh, great way to start the season. 
You, uh, you adjusted quickly to their defense, and, and your defense played uh, well, particularly in the second half. Well, we didn't know exactly how they were going to try to defend us, how they were going to try to attack us, but we had a plan for whatever happened, and we had to make a decision. We couldn't be bullheaded about Steve Davis, the Heisman of our formation. When they put nine people on line of scrimmage, we had to go to the passing attack. No huddle. Not only did it, did it take away their pass the ball, it made their front tired. So when we went back to the I formation, it served two purposes. Defense, uh, didn't know what they were going to see, but they saw just what we thought about everything. And as we talked to the players, quarterback Patrick Nix had a record-setting night. Um, when they stacked us up, bring the free safety and strong safety up in there and try to stop us, we've got to be able to throw the football. And, you know, i got to give a lot of credit to those wide outs. We've got some great ones. If anybody doubted it, well, we saw tonight that we've got some great ones. Offensive line did a great job, you know, giving me time. We didn't have any sacks, very little pressure, and we threw the ball a lot of times. So. 382 yards, that's an individual Auburn record. Well, it's, it's an Auburn record. It's an Auburn record. And those, a lot of those, those linemen, those receivers deserve a lot of the credit. They had nine people on the line playing the run all night long gave me a chance to get out there and run those little routes and I was fortunate enough that Patrick saw me. I remember one play when Goche, uh, Willie Goche caught a post pass. Um, they was playing the run, the safety was, and he caught a post. You know, there was something that really, you know, really opened up the pass by them uh, keying on the run. And I think we came out and we produced well. We had a couple of drops, but we um, we got a lot to improve on. And once we improve on the small things, we're going to have a great receiving call. Uh, we responded well and, hey, Pat just broke a record, so... <laughs> You know, they put nine in the box, and uh, when they do that, you know, uh, we only got seven blockers. So we had to go to the air, and Patrick Nix and the receivers responded well. Didn't bother, didn't bother me because uh, that's the best respect you can give a line, uh, running back, put nine in the box. It was very exciting. I, I was glad nobody didn't catch me from behind, but I uh, saw the quarterback coming. I thought I could dive over him and get in, but unfortunately, they didn't give it to me. Next time, next time. Yeah. His old Miss came out with everything in the book except about the wishbone, and it's just a matter of trying to recognize things. We got long way to go but you know we did pretty good came out in a lot of different formations that um, we haven't worked on and unfortunately the our hustle and effort just got us by this game i think we now we're gonna go back and you know we're gonna study the film look at our problem the mistakes we have made and some correct from there and move on yeah we still got a lot of improvement to do we had a little bust in the kicking game um that deep ball we gave up um a lot of yards too we, we didn't get too many three and outs and that's our, really our main goal we'll work towards that next week They were standing on the ramps at Jordan-Hare at kickoff time yesterday as we get into some of the action, Coach. Uh, you're going to move the ball for one first down and then uh, have to punt, and then Ole Miss is going to uh, start a pretty good drive here. Well, they do. They, uh, they, they, they have some formations. I mean, great tackle there. Andre Miller, you know, he's had an a, a injury-prone career. But it's a great day. He recovered a fumble and a good tackle there. This is third and five. Third and five. And uh, you'll see here is uh, Dale McGee. Uh, Makes good coverage on their receiver. Uh, but break, bend, but don't break to start with. Hold them to a field goal early. So they lead 3 nothing early on their opening possession. Well, that's right. And then we're here to see us with a, a critical uh, a third down situation. Nice throw to uh, Tyrone. Good throw to the middle of Patrick Nix. One of his many 28 uh, completions for the day. Record-setting day. Beautiful job there. They, they, they held him on a neck and a uh, bootleg. And then... Andy, Andy Fuller, we were able to get the ball to him a few times. A good catch there and uh, um, getting the ball moving. We were able to move the football. We decided to find out how we're going to be able to play it. We came out wanting to run the football, but uh, they put nine men up front. They, they, they had a defense to stop our Heisman Trophy candidate, and uh, we had to throw it. And you'll see us throwing uh, 41 times almost every down. Patrick, you'll see he's coming to a second receiver, looking for the inside receiver. They covered it. Harold Morrow had about seven catches out of the backfield. Uh, catching the football and uh drive stalls kicked the field goal hawkins kicked the 44 yarder he had two on the night missed a couple of extra points well you know the, the field goal were good we missed some extra points we've got to get that corrected because that'll get you beaten so it's not happy with that but the field goals are very positive jason missed it right there uh beautiful stop we have a big big critical third down they've driven again they're third and one jason missed makes a great stop and you'll see right here again fourth boom. and one Jason missed on the fourth and one, another great stop. Two big plays, and again, when a big play comes, he, the guy just finds a way of getting in there. You know, it, he, he's, not, he's like a cockroach. It's not what he can do. It's what he falls into and messes up all the time. But back on offense now, we made a decision to go to no huddle. Uh, they, were, they were putting nine men on the line of scrimmage. Uh, we, we said, one, we need to pass the ball, two, let's get their defensive front real tired. 
And so we went to a no-huddle, a sh shotgun offense, and, and Patrick Nix threw 13 straight completions, and uh, we really put some movement in the ball and put some touch uh, points on the board. But it's something that we have to do to mix in with the eye formation. Again, Willie Gauthier on the outside there. All you need is one guy to break a tackle. You, one guy breaks a tackle for big play. Now we're down inside the five-yard line. We go back to the uh, eye formation. So watch this fine run here. Steve Davis weighing 223 pounds, the smallest he's been in college. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, he had some great runs. With, only, with 70 yards and 14 carries, uh, I'll tell you, he's going to have a great year. And, uh, and uh, um, we're looking forward to this. This is uh, Dew Innocent did a great job of running the football. This team back. is true. a fine offensive football team. Eight starters back for Ole Miss. They have a great plan. We just kept working. Good pressure. Good pressure on the, on the offensive front. The quarterback just slipped and fell. But that was vital because that was a, a third down play. And... Uh, really hurt their drive there but we're back on offense you can see us just there's the quarterback draw there and Patrick Nick showing uh, smartly getting down after getting the first down but that's an important part of the of the plan there is you have a, a draw a screen and all the passes at the 49 now he's just picking them apart picking them apart it's hard now you got to remember in between plays we go right to line of scrimmage and line up they can't really send in different plays and make too many adjustments and so we just try to keep on there's the blitz he reads the blitz those the quick release. This is uh, Robert Baker, true freshman. See him make people miss. Yeah. You're going to see an exciting player there as, as we go on and, and see some of the things he can do. Back inside the five, back to the goal line. There's Steve Davis. Takes the end zone. Another good run. Touchdown. Fred, Fred Beasley with a good block at the goal line. Fred's done a good job. He added to the fullback position. He and Kevin McLeod. I think Fred had 57 yards and about 40 yards catching. Steve, 70 yards. Watch Patrick. Just two-point play here. Watch this little improvisation. <laughs> Robert Baker, a lot of fun there. That's the kind of stuff, the old uh, stuff you like, you love to see out of that kind of slow, Patrick fluty looking stuff. Patrick paid the price for that one, though. Yeah, he's he's a little I, I know Chris, his, 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 his new wife was worried about him there, seeing him limp off the field, but I think he'll be fine. <laughs> they come back now. Great pressure, Anthony Harris and Terry Solomon. We've got a very fast defense. Well, not a big defense, but we've got a very fast defense. They did hustle. Our defense hustled so much last night. All these things. There's Terry Solomon coming. Mark Smith, this is where he broke contain. The tough, and the coverage was not that bad, but when a quarterback breaks contain, you see Larry Melton, their great, their speed receiver, got behind him a couple of feet, but that's uh, one minute before halftime. Mm -hmm. It was the only disappointing. Jason makes a great hit there on the goal line, but a guy gets over. Instead of going in 17-3, to 3, you go in 17-10, to 10, but that was the only touchdown our defense gave up. Now you got a minute and 25 left in the half, and you're going to get three points out of it. Well, we were going to run the clock out unless we had a big play. But boom, first play, there's Fred Beasley taking that fullback position and making it a better position. And it's time for us to go ahead and move the ball up with a, uh, put the one-minute offense back in. We only in. have one timeout during this period. Right, so we go back to our offense. Beautiful, he really thread the needle there. They're starting to cover that one quicker, which means something else will be open. We've got very little time now, but we got it down, we got it down, and here's a beautiful field goal now. Last play of the half, and uh, Hawkins kicks it through to make the final, uh, rather the halftime score, 20 to 10, back in just a moment. Pay-per-view for UT Chattanooga next week. You need to check with your local cable operator right away and get set up uh, for the big game on television uh, next week. Coach, I know you were interested to see what they were going to be doing defensively coming out in the second half after you'd begun to uh, move the football. Away. Well, that's right. They saw the no huddle. They knew that we were uh, uh, doing that thing. And so we knew they'd try to stop it some way. But we wanted to go back to the eye some, too, the eye formation. But even when you go back to the eye, it doesn't mean you can run it. you got to throw out of the eye. And you're going to see we try to mix it up every way. Defensively, you'll see they did a great job of coming out. But that way he starts good. Terry Solomon with a big sack there. Sacks like that or negative plays really hurt teams that, di that dink you. Throw the short stuff and the, uh, the, the pressure really helped us. Do Innocent coming out. Great job there. Uh, they got Shannon Suttle, our uh, defensive tackle, making a good tackle there. They have to punt in Auburn's first possession now of the second half coming up. It's going to be a good one. There's Steve Davis. Good point. <laughs> yeah, Steve Davis ripping right up through. You just see him about ready to break it. They just, they just hoping they can, get, hoping they can get him down. Here comes maybe the critical moment in the game because on fourth and one you get stopped uh, at the uh, 11 yard line, and they can take this now and drive and tie the score. Well, this really, I mean, we, we, we really disappointed me. It was our first short run we didn't get, but again, the same strategy that they used to take us away from the run was a the strategy they stopped that play. Andre Miller, big fumble, big fumble recovery. 
They had a couple of fumbles second half. Our defense recovered a couple of fumbles that I thought were big game changers there. The, the short yards we missed could have been, but the ones that were were their fumbles. They're, they're, they're a good football team. Without that, we're, we're in a, a tight ball game much longer. And like a good team is supposed to do, you take advantage of the penalty. Well, when they, when they put the safeties on the line, both cornerbacks are one-on-one -on -one with our wide receivers to stop the post, the takeoff, and the underneath route. Here comes Patrick for the touchdown. He had two of those on the night, along with 382 yards of passing offense. And I think it's a night he'll remember. Defense back on the field, doing innocent uh, running back. There's another fumble there that hurt him, and our defense got the ball. I think you'll see uh, uh, Charlie Rose uh, got the football. Uh, and Marcellus, recovered the ball. Marcellus took it. And Marcellus caused the fumble, and Charlie Rose uh, recovered it. Patrick again throwing the ball out to our uh, Willie Gauthier. One-on-one, -on -one. he was taking the guys deep and coming back to the football with one-on-one -on -one coverage. Takes time for that pattern to develop, and he had the time. And there's old Fred Beasley up the middle. Uh, he, you know, in high school, he was a fullback. He's mm -hmm. kind of a little more comfortable than people probably think uh, as a fullback in this offense. And he can do so many things. That's, that's a great thing. And here's his backup, Kevin McLeod, uh, going in for the score. And... Uh, now you're starting to get some uh, some relax. You're starting to relax just a little bit. The heartburn's going away, Coach. Going away now. You little, the nerves are gone now with 22 <laughs> points. The defense is making that happen. Anthony Harris showing his his, his speed. Larry Melton, uh, redshirt freshman, his tackling ability. These young guys are starting to grow up with the, with the leadership they're getting. This is third and eight. Another good coverage by you go against uh, Dale McGee. You're going against a great cover guy, a cover defender because of his speed and uh, intelligence. Forces them to kick a field goal. It's a meaningless field goal at this time, uh, but we forced them to the field goal. Again, only one touchdown given up by our defense. Mm. Okay, Auburn's next possession now. This is third and five. That's what happens. You throw a five-yard pass, and it makes 18 yards. That, that, some people will say, well, gosh, the little passes are, are, all help you. But there's 18 yards on it. If you'll execute it, it can do those things. Play action opens up the middle. Beautiful catch by Willie Gauthier here. Watch him reach out with his hands and bring it down. Just a super job. It's one of the unanswered questions that two Auburn White. I think well, that's they... the Frank Sanders type of catch. That's what people want to see. And I think you're seeing now if we can keep people healthy. Uh, you know, I'll never get it. We'll, we'll always love Frank, but we got somebody else got to step up. Right. True freshman Robert Baker didn't want a touchdown. He wanted to catch it on the one. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I'd imagine when doing that, uh, Patrick gets the touchdown. And might as well, since he had such a great day passing, let him get him for running touchdown. 15 yard penalty for pulling him off by his face mask. Uh, nothing intentional to harm anybody, but, to, you know, it gave us a kickoff from the 50. Patrick Thanks. is done for the night. Quite right. a night's work, Coach. Quite well, a night's work. Sure is. And now you're getting to put some people in now, as you get to see there's Ricky Neal jumping the pile. A lot of new faces out here. I, th I think the fans get excited when they pull their programs out and get to see these new names they've been hearing about, and uh, really makes the game fun for 60 minutes. Good pass pressure there. They're going deep. Martavius Houston, you love that name, but... Uh, Missed his first Good. interception. Make a note on that name, huh? Yeah, he looks like a, he's a true freshman. Put that one down. down. <laughs> we had him a chance for an interception. It's kind of fun to get in now with a little less heat on. And uh, you'll see some people start. Watch old Ricky Neal, red shirt freshman linebacker. He did score. Oh, he, he scored. I wish they'd have given it to him. He sitting. He landed right on the line. I, the official was, I don't know why he put it on the ground. No way he could have sent the official was knocked down. But it doesn't matter. It just allows the offense to get the score. Uh, Damian Craig gets in, in, in here and uh, takes the sweep. Recognizes pressure and makes the throw to Jesse McCover. Jesse wanted to bob a little bit, but made the good catch. Great job. Our players have done a great job in the celebration rule by hugging each other and immediately turning to their own players to beat the celebration rule. Tommy Tuberville, I know it was a tough opening game for him, but he did a great job. They had a great scheme for us, and most of the fans over there know we were in a battle, and it was tight enough for the fans. I don't think we would have won any tighter. We'll be back in just a minute. UT Chattanooga, 6 o'clock uh, Saturday night, Jordan here. You get to see how your team responds to a team that they'll be heavily favored against. Well, uh, you know, I'm not going to give them a choice. Well, how we got to, we got to be better. I, we're going to have to put a better football team out there for Chattanooga than we had at Ole Miss. So, so, so we've got to get better. The first and second week's critical. And if we're going to have the season we need, we need to see a better football team on the field for Chattanooga to face. We're going to be a better football team, and we must respond. Okay, it's uh, the Auburn Network's on the air at 4.30, and it is a pay-per-view game, so you need to contact your local cable operator this week and get all set up 
for Auburn and Chattanooga next Saturday, 6 o'clock, Jordan Hare Stadium. Look for another big crowd, and we'll be back with you here on the Auburn Football Review on Sunday. Check your local listing for time. And also remember the Auburn Football Preview, which uh, plays on Saturday morning prior uh, to each game. We'll see you for that as well next week. Coach Belton's appeal a couple of hours before game time and thread their way through thousands of fans down the hill to Jordan Hare Stadium. The Auburn campus seems to become one huge lawn party and cookout on Saturday mornings. Everything imaginable to eat, including Auburn pudding. Quoting the Sporting News story, when the crowd in the stadium is a couple of times the size of the town, you're in the right place. Jordan Hare rocks and Tumor Corner rolls. The other top five football towns behind South Bend and Auburn, Lincoln, Nebraska, home of the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Tallahassee, Florida, Florida State, and Ann Arbor, Michigan, the University of Michigan Wolverine. Lots of good fishing and wildlife watching time. So mighty moccasins of Tennessee Chattanooga. Auburn scored seven, count them, seven touchdowns in the first half. Stephen Davis does most of the damage. Number 48 leans in to make it 7 nothing. A little bit easier this time. Huge hole for special delivery. S.D. Davis to make it 14 nothing. And then after a long punt return by Robert Baker, not an instant replay. This is Stephen Davis on the toss again. 21-zip Auburn after one. Second quarter, Patrick Nix to Hicks Poor. Make it 28-3 Tigers. This time it's Kevin McLeod with Damian Craig in. McLeod up the middle for five yards. 35-3. Then guess who? Steven Davis again. This one goes 36 yards, cut back across the field, and it's see ya, would not care to be ya. Four touchdowns for Davis. That's one shy of Joe Cribb's record of five. Damian Craig in this time. The touchdown pass to Harold Morrow. 49-3 Auburn at the half. Auburn routes UTC 76-10. Now the Tigers will get ready to go to LSU next Saturday night. We had the mount personnel, but what I was pleased with is we executed. You still got to go out there if you're going against air and complete things and run things. So I was very pleased uh, uh, with the execution, obviously, uh, to score that often because uh, uh, we weren't three and out on defense like we'd hoped to be because they ran the ball solid uh, at Chattanooga, uh, but the offense was able to execute, and that's the name of the game. It's going to be a lot tougher next week in the bye. Football review is next. Don't forget to join today in Alabama tomorrow. It's Now, fellas, you, got, you did what you're supposed to do. You, 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 if you're a champion, you deliver a knockout punch, and you deliver it early. And that's what you were supposed to do, and that's what you did. That's what you did. And that game ended up exactly how it should end up. You'd be complimentary of the other team in press. Be complimentary of them and the way they play. But, man, what do you say, what do you say start the morning? Let's dedicate one week to LSU. Let's dedicate one week to LSU. is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bowden. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank, your we can do bank. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure treated pie. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Golden Flake Snack Food. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. The Auburn offense did a makeover of the Auburn record book last night, 76 to 10 over UT Chattanooga. Coach, I've seen a lot of games. I've never seen a team score 10 straight touchdowns. Well, again, uh, the, the execution is what I was pleased with. The score probably is not something we should focus on too much. But the fact that we executed, I don't care if you're throwing the ball against air, you still have to throw it and catch it, execute it, no penalties. Very, I was very pleased. Defensively gave up basically one field goal till the, till the, the we unloaded the bench the last minutes of the game. 
uh, a remarkable, remarkable day of execution. Chattanooga played hard to the very end. The score is not the factor. We saw the execution that we needed. And with a 49-point uh, first half, you were able to just uh, look at anybody you wanted to look at in the second half. Well, that's right. We've got a lot of freshmen that are having to play uh, and play early, but they're not ready. So we were able to play them from mid-second quarter on. We played mostly our down-the-liners in, in a lot of situations. This helped us a lot, and I, I, uh, I think it's going to help us down the road. I would say probably the centerpiece of all of that, uh, that opportunity to look at players would be the wideouts. You really got to uh, look at the young uh, receivers. I think, uh, I think along with the secondary, the wide receivers, the young wide receivers, because you have to have uh, uh, backups. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Robert Baker's ready now, but now Eric Lowe, Carson Bailey. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of, uh, of, of uh, Hicks Poor and Jeremy Hand. Mm -hmm. Those are our backups, uh, uh, Tyrese Williams. Now we've got about eight people that we can put in the game. Uh, and, that, and that's very important. Because there may come a time when you've got to get in the four wide outs and stay there. That will, you never know. Like I said, we've got a team as explosive and, 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 and as, as LSU is coming up this week, and now we've got to be able to do whatever they give us. Okay, uh, in the Auburn dressing room, we decided this week to talk with uh, some of the young players, uh, some of the new faces that will become familiar as the years wear on. It felt real good being able to, you know, for the first team to go in and give us a chance to get in and get us some, some reps, some playing time in, in a, you know, game-type situation. I knew they were um, lacking some receivers, so, you know, I kind of thought that if I came down and worked hard, real hard, you know, I'd have a real good chance of getting in there. And when I got my chance, I tried to make the best of it tonight. So hopefully next week we'll get another chance and hopefully all three of us will make the best of it. We want to go out and show the coaches that we can move the football well like the first team we did a good job doing that and i think um overall we did a good job and i don't think coach asked too much more than what we did tonight but now we want to concentrate on lsu i really didn't feel relaxed because i had been sat on the bench for so long but you know <laughs> when i got in and ran a couple of plays felt pretty good so. next to hicks for a touchdown i believe the first time in, a, in your career I, I sure was i hope there's many more <laughs> that'll be fun i never know when he's gonna throw the ball to me in that gold set i know he likes tyrone and and really to get the ball it always is I run around full speed and I'm ready. We got you a start tonight, how about Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was, uh, you know, at first it was kind of scary, but, you know, you know, after the first play, it was all good. Well, you're, you're now in the offensive record book. How about that? Well, I'll tell you what, when I come back to sideline, Patrick Nee said I've seen everything now, and I tell you what, it, 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 it was fun for me. The number one team went in and did what they had to do, you know, gave everybody up, stuck the team, a chance to get in and play, you know, improve ourselves next week. I didn't mess up hardly any on my assignments this week. Um, they kind of, they double teamed the nose guard a lot on the pass rush, so we really couldn't. All we could do is press the pocket. The first round, you know, they went out early and did what they had to do. You know, and they, gave us, they gave us a chance, the younger guys, to get a lot of playing time tonight, you know, and I, and I really appreciate that. There's no one blocked me at all, so I was a clean cut. Mm. And so my speed, I thought I could have a good chance of blocking it, so I did. Uh, and uh, Larry beat you to it, huh? Oh, yes, he did. <laughs> I was hoping to get it, but it's a good thing that he got, that he got it and made a touchdown. Coach, the enthusiasm of the Auburn fans is just amazing. Uh, 82,000 for this game, that just blew me away. I mean, I, I still am being amazed by the contribution our fans are making, the excitement they're bringing to our football players to have them pl the, the Tiger walk all the way to the large crowd. Wonderful job. Thank you again. Okay, you wanted to jump these guys, knock them out, and get on with business, and that's exactly how it turned out, Coach. Well, we needed to. I told our players a, a champion or a contender for a championship knocked somebody out in the first round. Steve Davis, I'm telling you, continues to run better than he's ever run. Uh, let's quit talking about Heisman. It'll let that take care of itself. Steve Davis is, is forcing defenses to give us what we want to see. And this young man goes nine for nine on the night. <laughs> I mean, Pat Nick's nine for nine. I was, it, and when halftime, I said, Pat, I won't tell you this, but I don't want any incompletions. And he went out <laughs> through the next, uh, next series and got out of the game. But the big reason for that, uh, uh, Tyrone Goodson. Fred Beasley continues to give us that. Remember the 40 or 50 extra yardage I won out of the fullback position mm -hmm. this year? We're getting that type of play out of the two fullbacks that we've got this year. Really contribution. And then this guy goes in and, you know, he's got, at least he's got about as many rushing touchdowns as anybody else in America anyway right now. Steve has just done a great job. Well, Offensive line. 
66, 76 yards on the opening possession. Jason Niska, another behind the line tackle, accompanied by uh, Anthony Harris, our two linebackers. I see Derek Robinson in there as a nose guard. Uh, we play a little mixing up the nose guard. They had some fine runners. Their runners ran so hard, but you just get tackled by so many people. Good effort there. You see Terry Solomon and Marcellus Mostella. And there's Mark Smith, 97, who really is coming along but needs to continue to come along to help us. Offense is back out. There's a little reverse to Robert Baker. Makes good 10 yards. The reverse is, doesn't have to score. It's not a trick play. It must uh, stop the flow of the defense and pick up 10 yards there. Robert Baker makes it a fine play. At the 44 of UT now. Nice little in and outside move, and buddy, he is doing a super job. Good blocking by the offensive line and recognition of the stunt. Brings up second and one, a down where you can do just about anything you want to, right, sir? Well, yeah, but when you got, you know, Willie Gosey, a great leaping catch there, but we're trying to, they, they're again putting the safety into the line of scrimmage to stop the sweep when we throw the slant, to the, and there's Fred Beasley. We had more passes in long run stopped inside the final. We somebody won. First two games, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, somebody get a touchdown. <laughs> Every game, everyone's there's another walk-in. Uh, this job. keeps up, uh, Stephen Davis is going to lead the league in scoring. <laughs> well, we're going to give him a chance of lead, leading something. <laughs> and uh, uh, again, uh, there was a, a great job there. Very quickly, 14 to nothing. And uh, that's what happens when you uh, uh, when you jump on somebody quick in our defense again. This is a third and one they're throwing out of it and uh, don't get the uh, execution this time, although they've moved the football pretty well in their first possession. We, if our defense for two weeks in a row, our defense has had to go up against an offense that we've not known what they're going to do because UTC played a, a smaller college team. Oh, Robert Baker did another fine job. Watch this. He stays in bounds at the end. Watch him sidestep there. Kind of exciting guy. We got to make sure we don't overuse him too early because he's going to fit in like any other starter and don't put him on everything. He's a special player. One of the talented freshmen in this current class. There's a guy we've got to get the ball to again is, is Andy Andy Fuller, and uh, he can really be important. If we get to in the situation, he's going to be a factor, but blocking. Oh, did you see him? Oh, the, that outside, that kick-out block was dangerous there. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. and, uh, but a good, good execution again of, of, the, of, the, of the toss sweep on the goal line. If you don't stop our toss sweep, uh, you know, we're going to run it until the cows come home. Jason, again, this good. 98, uh, uh, redshirt freshman James Roscoe, counting on big things from him. And uh, there's Scott Stacy in there and a, and a good bunch and a, a typical beautiful Auburn girl there. Um, and here's our, now no huddle. We've tried to change the flow and no huddle. We told Patrick he comes around, watch this little flow here. Try, there it is, to, uh, Harold Morrow. Uh, he slipped behind on the broken play, stiff on for a little bit, and takes it down to about the 5 or 10. And a uh, uh, great job of, of reacting to a uh, pass rush there. Really concerns us. Remember how LSU last year gave us fits. There's the blitz. There's the, it looks just like Florida, that same pass that we used against Florida right there. But Hicks Poor is the, is the guy right now. I don't know if that's going to go down to record first for the most famous catch, but that was Hicks Poor's most famous first college touchdown catch. Nick to Hicks may not become yeah, a Nick to Hicks may not become, but, but what it may, we don't know. But <laughs> defense doing a good job. Now, our defense, we saw tons of three and out. And after about the first three series, we saw three and out and three and out, a bunch of them. And, uh, boy, there's the good effort there. Shannon Suttle there uh, uh, chasing the ball at the end. And now offense is back on the field. Damien's going to get the rest of the night. Steve there. Davis wow. finding just, he's saying, golly, I better get me some yards. There's not many carries I'm going to have this game. And he's picking up, he picked, had about eight yards to carry. And there's a nice a backup fullback, uh, Kevin McLeod. And uh, we have a great tandem there. You'll see the little trap right here. Beautiful trap block. He makes a miss, comes across the goal line, and looks fine in that situation. A good score. He was about to celebrate before Shannon Robick <laughs> pulled him off. There, you were about to see the you first see a celebration. couple of those close ones. Well, you know, time. penalties. We've had 24 and 30 penalties in two games, and that's an all-time record. Great job by Larry Melton. Oh, should have had the intercept. He had it. Now get up off the ground. <laughs> Live off the ground. Here's now. a third and two now. Third and two here. Boy, there's nice. Yeah, there's Takia Spikes and Mark Smith. Some new numbers there. Nate Smith. Uh, and the rest of the defense pulling back uh, to hold him from making that first down. Here comes the big guy now. Watch this run. Finally give him a chance. And there's the sweep. He's able to cut back, and, and that's number four. He's their fastest guy, but it's just it's about all over. 36 yards for the touchdown. And he's retired for the evening. Yes. So uh, Go, puts the feed bag on. There it is. Fourth and one now uh, on this next play. Here we go. Good defense, good defense. The, de the key is to, is, to, is to get penetration. 
It's not to, it's to change the line of scrimmage and defense. That's, I love to see that. Had a big fourth down stop last week, and that's always good. Now, Damian Craig again had a little, had a little quarterback draw on, makes a miss and gets it down and moving again. It's kind of dangerous. You put Damian in, the offense should not slow down. It should be just as well as it always does that we expect it to. He's getting to work with the first group line, throws it to uh, Tyrone Goodson, makes a good play, and gets out of bounds at the six. Second and goal here at the six-yard line. He reads the coverage, goes to the third receiver, goes to Harold Martin, it's one of the end zone. If you cover him too tightly, it opens up the inside receiver. And we got a touchdown there in about 35 seconds. An amazing statistic, Coach. No third down in the first half. It was amazing. We really never got to a third down, and, and every that you know every every series, the first and second down went for another first down. But the execution is the name of the game, and it must be continued to be execution as we get two better people now on the road. We'll be back in just a minute. How far do you? No one has to tell Auburn fans what a huge game is coming up Saturday night uh, in Baton Rouge, LSU, a Western Division, a key Western Division game with the Auburn Tigers. Now, if you're not one of the lucky ones with the ticket, we have two ways for you to hear or see every play of this big game. The Auburn Network will be on the air at 5.30 Saturday afternoon uh, with complete coverage of the game. And the game is being offered pay-per-view in Alabama. Now, if you are a cable subscriber, you call your local cable operator as soon as possible and get all the arrangements made so that you'll be tuned in and ready to go for the big game. Home Dish owners, there's the number for you to call to get addressed, 1-800-TV-STARS. Coach, I know you want every able-bodied person, whether there or listening in. Well, you know, I think all the tickets are gone, so you can't get a seat. So get a sideline beside me by watching pay-per-view. I hope you all join in with me. A big game, and uh, we hope you get a chance to uh, see or at least to hear it. Also, remember that Tiger Talk uh, this Thursday night will be uh, in Auburn at the Buffalo Connection. Uh, come join Coach Bowden and Jim Fife and all the gang, and uh, he'll field all your questions Thursday night on Tiger Talk at 7 o'clock. We'll be back. In just a minute for the second half. Well, Coach, not often do you have the luxury of a 46-point lead, so... You can do anything you want to now, right? Well, yeah, I think now we want to make sure we come out with some intensity coming out of halftime, so create a good habit and don't create bad habits, and then see if our backups can understand that they have a tradition to uphold. When they step on that field, uh, they're playing as hard as they can play because this is going to be a half of just to see young people play uh, and to see how they can execute there. And as you indicated, you get a real good look at them, not just a couple of three plays. That's just right. Well, we're going to try. You try to come out of a halftime. Sometimes your, your number ones, no matter what the score, will come out the second half and start, which we try to do because you need to maintain uh, uh, that type of uh, attitude and uh, concentration. Great block kick, Tyree Swift. We had a return on. We're up. We don't want to block any kicks at this point because we've got a score in hand. We don't want to embarrass the other team trying to block everything. But we had, we had a return on because somebody always has to pressure the punter. He gets the block on a broken assignment. Now, Damien is working on the no-hud a little bit, and Carson Bailey, one of our freshmen there, uh, Tommy, my brother Tommy, has done a great job of doing young receivers as well as Jimbo Fisher has a, uh, every, with the quarterback. So, of course, back up Kevin McLeod running up the middle for a score there. Those uh, were the first three, three, uh, first two third-down players of the game for all. Finally got into some third-down plays, and uh, Damien does a great job setting underneath the daggum blitzer, hitting his curl. Carson makes another good catch. He'll send Cade Pennington trying to help a block there. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, the offensive line uh, and, our, and our second team offensive line right now uh, making the open the holes right there for us. And uh, we really like to see them. Jeremy Hand there getting a block. Jeremy out of, out of Auburn uh, getting a block there on the touchdown there. And Heinz Tucker making the stick. Making the big touchdown run on that goal. Now defensively back, Bobby Daffin there. Nate Smith on the front. You're seeing some different defensive people now. Good coverage there. There's a fine receiver. Owens was, is really a, a fine receiver, receiver Chattanooga. Martavius Houston covered him. But Jack, Coach Hines has done a super job getting these young guys ready. And uh, they're playing very, a little bit conservative, which is what I like. But they, they're not playing as tight, you might have said, last year's guys playing people. 
but I think it's good news. I was trying to really run up the middle and not let the score get over 70. I can, and Eric does this to, to you. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful run. I, I can I, see your concern. You, I, do, <laughs> you do not want to. Uh, you no, do I really don't. I don't like 70. I don't uh, like from for first because I'm, I'm no one double A. Look, it's fun, uh, and I do not like it. 60s were fine, but we blocked the kick, uh, and then a 77-yard touchdown. And after that, we, 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 we weren't going to let something happen. But neither can you tell the players. <laughs> no, it's not fair to Eric, Eric Hines Tucker to tell him not to want to score uh, or any of our players. Uh, John Cooley, we wouldn't even let him throw the ball. <laughs> and so good Dan Evans makes a good coverage. Freshman, two freshmen, Dan Evans making a, a fine coverage there. But they roll out. And once the quarterback breaks the chain like this, one-on-one -on -one coverage is very difficult. Very difficult once, once we get that. And so, again, the quarter, they, they make a nice throw in. Uh, to get 10 points. Of course, your defense is trying to maintain a scoring defense. But uh, again, you can't sit there and put your people back in. But it was a good job by the defense. Coach Hall really uh, has had his uh, defense ready to go. And now going into LSU, that offense has got to make up for the, what the defense did for us last year. A nice tribute, to, uh, I would think, to the uh, to the Moxons. They, they stayed in the game and finally scored their touchdown, which uh, I'm sure was a, a good, nice goal for them to score. Them. That's right. Buddy Green, you know, has done a good job. They're one and one right now. And like I said, I, I, not many one double A's ever beat one A's, but that helps them in their program. And they've got to go on and go to a playoff. And this game would be will be discarded when they get evaluated for a playoff. Final word in just a minute. We'll be right, right back. Did you know that it uh, some up time between 11.30 yesterday and now you've snuck a peek or two at LSU in that great game they played with State? Well, uh, you know, I've, I've got Louisiana on my mind, uh, <laughs> and, and, it's a, and it's a credit to them. They are playing good football. Coach DiNardo has taken a team of very talented players from last year and the year before and now got them uh, running schemes and, 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 a, and a philosophy of football that's, that's very positive. And, uh, they are a contender right now, and we have got to be ready. But we will. We're excited about this football game. With the uh, enthusiasm that he has built up in the short time he's been there, Tiger uh, Stadium will be, it will, it'll be a place. It'll be a great place to play. Uh, it'll be uh, like Florida last year and how Auburn always is, and, and they're going to be ready to play. But we're going to be ready to play, too. Every year we've gone into the LSU, they have just beaten Mississippi State. This is the third year in a row. We're going to face the same situation, but a very good, maybe the best we got to go regroup. we got two weeks, man. we got two weeks. All those two years ago, my old man lost to Notre Dame and then come back and won a national championship. All we can do is go take this. Let's go take it one day at a time and get better, recommit, get better every day. We come back against Kentucky, we're going to be a better ball club than Mississippi State, a better ball club than Florida, a better ball club. But we'll learn we'll learn from this game, man. We gotta learn from this game. We got a chance to have a great football season and a great team. This is just a tough one to look tough one to lose. Tough one to lose. This is the Auburn Football Review with Coach Terry Bouts. Brought to you by your Alabama Coca-Cola bottler. Always Coca-Cola. Colonial Bank, your we-can-do bank. Great Southern Wood, makers of Osmos pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't say Osmos on the yellow tag, believe me, you don't want it. Golden Flake Snack Foods. Golden Flake, it's where you find the flavor. Alabama Power, the energy to make Alabama better. LDDS WorldCom, the official long-distance carrier of the Auburn Alumni Association. By Ziegler Meats, a tradition of great taste. Your Alabama Toyota dealer. I love what you do for me, Toyota. Price Oil Incorporated, a leader in petroleum retailing products and services. Price Oil on the prowl. Your Alabama John Deere dealer. Nothing runs like a deer. And by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Alabama, the carrying company. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Last night, Baton Rouge, Auburn 6. LSU 12. Were it not for the fact that uh, you were on the wrong end, that was one heck of a football game, Terry Brown. Yep, it sure was. I guess the, the LSU fans sure uh, partied last night, I, I guess. But it was we had great fans and support. But, you know, just when you think you know everything about the game or you're getting, get, getting to figure it out, you get a game like this where you really couldn't do things that you want to do and you've you got to go back to the drawing board. But we'll grow from it. We'll learn from it. I don't feel quite as bad today as I did last night. And in a couple of days, we'll be, we'll be going forward and, uh, and getting things corrected. 
uh, if mistakes. If it wasn't a penalty, it was just a slightly overthrown ball or something. Seemed, it seems that something always happened. Well, we're not, a, we're not a good enough football team, I don't think, to play uh, have let those kind of mistakes and penalties and errors and win against a team like LSU. We have been a team, we're ranked high, we're a team that's been, been ranked because we win close ball games. Not because we dominate. We're not a dominant team against good teams, but we've been able to do those things. And until you have better talent, that's what happens. But you see what happened, and unfortunately it happened last year against LSU, a lot of credit being to LSU for the way they play. Mm. But you've got to go out and play good, fundamental football. And again, uh, a little bit my fault. Those players know a little bit their fault. We've all got to get together, take this loss together, and grow from it. Okay, let's go to the dressing room now and talk to a few of the players right after the game last night. Came out with a great game plan. Um, they did a lot of motion and things. Um, we didn't get adjusted real well. Um, they played real well. The crowd was into the game the whole game. We never took them out, so they got the victory. They came out with a real good defensive plan. We really didn't execute too much on offense, but um, we got to learn from other states. You have to Kentucky. We, every time we got something going, we shoot ourselves in the foot, you know, by getting a penalty or something. Um, only thing I can say come back next week work hard work on our mistakes look forward to, to the future um, we was moving the ball in the second half um, but we just couldn't put the ball in the end zone and it's something we gotta go in we got off week next week that's something we gotta work on for next uh, Kentucky and um, get our offense back running smooth well, it seemed like every time we did that you know um, the wheels fell off somewhere whether it be a penalty or a, um, a phantom whistle or uh, you know, something would happen that, you know, it seemed like every time something, we got things going, we moved in their territory and all, you know, um, and we would just, we wouldn't execute and, you know, and, uh, no excuses, we didn't execute. And that's the bottom line, you know, they outplayed us, they executed when they had to and we didn't when we had to and, um, you know, it hurts and it's, it's a hard one to live with, but we've got to live with it and we've got to come back from this. Very emotional night. Uh at Tiger Stadium last night for their fans. First time that uh, LSU came out in the white jerseys, that kind of helped get things along. The fireworks sure. display and all that, it was a pretty good beginning to well, get you, them into the game. Well, you know, you, you know you'd almost, I almost want to apologize. I try to trivialize the fans because I don't want our players to get into it, but it, they are a factor, and they do a great job at LSU, just like our fans do. It's a factor. 80,000 as we uh, get into the game now, 80,000. Uh, and a great contingent, as Coach said, of, of Auburn people in one end zone. I thought about, uh, as you were making that final drive, it was into the wrong end zone, too. Yeah, into but their end zone. Bill Beckwith, I think, passed word down before the game, do not have the fourth quarter drive into their student section, and we ended up driving into the student section. We, can't, we couldn't make that decision to change the yeah. field around. You just yeah. get stuck with it. But uh, it yeah. was the, you know, that was, the, you know, we'll see here. The things that happened here in this first quarter on, uh, are the things that led to that last play. That smoke on the field after the fireworks display to uh, open the entrance of the team. <laughs> but our defense again comes out, and uh, you know Kevin Falk, 171 yards, three touchdowns to Mississippi State. He rushed 23 times for like uh, less than 40 yards, so about two yards, less than two yards of carry. And so you can imagine they had only 70 yards rushed the entire night. You did not allow him to get on the corner as he did against State. Uh, right, and we did a good job. We didn't let we didn't let Kennison or or, or, or Falk be the, the guys that cost us the ball game. We we tended to bend early in defense and give up playing possession time, but the defense I thought made great strides in becoming a better football team. On your first possession, two penalties stopped the drive. Well, you know our offensive guard. Uh, on a pass play has a face mask a 15 yard penalty and we got a first and i mean a 15 yard penalty and we couldn't overcome it you can't do it against lsu they come back now on their drive and you'll see them get their touchdown they only they they, they get a good uh, uh, good field position start at the 49 and uh, complete that's a big play right there and they get them in position to go for the score that's right well they, they their receivers are very talented and we have to play a little soft so they don't get the big play and then uh they run the fake uh, to, the, to the running back and get people wide open again. That's the tough thing. You stop the run and you leave some play action on the goal line. And they go up 7 to nothing. but I don't think anyone thought that would be the deciding factor. We come back to the next series, I think we saw without the penalty what happened. 17 yards, Fred Beasley up the middle. Uh, they were rushing upfield on the outside very well. The inside plays and Steve Davis comes around, finds a hole there, and we've got the ball moving. But as you'll see, as all of our fans saw that were there, as we get down toward their goal line. Here comes that, another penalty. Well, yeah, the penalties just killed us right there. Another another penalty. We just had, I mean, every game a series, and that's no excuse. I mean, you can't have penalties. We were leading the conference in lack of penalties, 
we get there, and I don't know how many, but they were critical mistakes and penalties. Okay, and uh, LSU begins another drive. Uh, they're mixing, they're making third down plays. In well, they were half. seven for 15 for the night in third down. We were two for 13. I think we were about five or seven in the first half. First half, half they were excellent. They, again, they did the things they needed to do. Uh, got protection for the quarterback. They kick a field goal there, and now they're up 10 to three uh, in the first quarter. Here comes an interesting uh, section of the game now. Watch the kickoff and uh, then what happens beyond the kickoff? Then? Well, we've had this happen twice. We've got two newcomers back there, and he's supposed to bring it out unless they tell him, well, the, the, you know, Eric Tucker Hines cannot tell him to stay in when you're a half a yard in the end zone, and he starts to run. You can't say, no, 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 you're in the end zone. You've got to let him go. And so, Robert really didn't know where he was. Did he no, he just got, we've got, we've got to get that corrected. And here's the one. This is where we had the inadvertent whistle. Uh, our players stop, and uh, theirs didn't, but the officials didn't blow it. And we don't know where it came from, but... Uh, we had to take a, take a uh, safety there. You'd, uh, you'd have hoped that the officials would have said inadvertent whistle, let's play the play over, but as you'll see, that did not affect, although we had to kick back to them, we, we can't say that affected the game, but it was unfortunate. And then they reel off a 16-play, seven-minute drive here, getting down on the goal line. We only had about 17 plays Here's on offense. Here's a hold in yeah. the line of scrimmage there. You see the flag go down. Yeah, they get a touchdown, but they had to stay, they, they, we had a good blitz on. They had to tackle somebody to open up the play. And so it was a good call, good, uh, and it forced them to a field goal that they missed. And so the, uh, the, the safety and the on kick that we gave back to them because they missed it, it only gave up two points and cost us seven or eight minutes. Uh, but as you say, it was gonna, that, that, that's a lot more time you can't be on offense. Uh, and uh, we come back. And here they go again on offense. Great play from deep ball. We tried to make sure Kennison did not hurt us deep and that Falls did not hurt us in the run. And then, then uh, Larry Melton there did a great job. And there's our speed on defense. Really showed up Saturday again as we began to uh, neutralize their running game. They make a first down and they're to 23 now. Well, early on, they were, they were again mixing up offensively and were controlling the clock. And uh, you look first half statistics, they were able to control the clock. Big play off, coming here. And this is where we step in. And then Dale McGee. A little deja vu, interception is going to go all the way, just kind of ran out of gas. He's our fast, one of our fast guy on the team, but they've got one guy fast as him, that's number six. <laughs> and uh, and what's sad here, we come back there and you'll see us driving for a first down, and we get called for a pick by Hicksport. Uh, you'll see the play right here, Hicksport trying to run around the linebacker. Now, this is the uh, first down uh, play. Okay, that's not the one where they called him for the... For the uh, now, uh, here comes the uh, pick play. The pick play. They uh, called the him on... The pick play. Well, yeah, we don't have any pick plays. We just run this, you know, our little crossing routes to do our four wide outs, but uh, um, Hicksport trying to get around the linebacker. We throw the completion right there, and they call him for um, a pick which we don't have, and that's a 15-yard loss of down penalty, and it's, yeah, we get nothing out of the interception. And uh, one of those things that, again, uh, not only did, did we make mistakes, but they were mistakes that we could not overcome against a very good LSU team. And the crowd that is really keeping them really sharp the entire night. We'll be back in just a minute. As we get into the uh, second half of play, a uh, muggy night as it usually is in Baton Rouge, you had to be concerned a little bit, I'm sure, about your team. Well, yeah, I mean, I was jogging that day, and you could sense there's a little difference in the air that you have to get down there to realize it again. But, uh, you know, our players played hard. You didn't see anybody. They were in the second half. Didn't yeah, you? I mean, we, we did a little bit better. Of course, our offense wasn't in the 17 plays the first half. I was surprised the defense, the way they got better, because they were on the field the entire first half. This is uh, Auburn opens with a good drive. And well, we, we, get, we, we knew we had to come out and make something happen. We drove it right down the field. Uh, but when we got down close to Pedro at the red zone, and here's the play we'd like right here. Just make him miss right there if we could just got uh, him in the end zone had there. To block, yeah, had to block it. had to block on the outside. But that's one of those. You got, we got him down there now. We're, on the, we're inside the 15. We're at the 14-yard line. And we got a chance to get in there. We get zero gain, gain on the first down. End up with a second 10 and got a throw. And we incomplete and get a two-yard gain and force us into a field goal where they outplayed us there. Matt Hawkins comes in. He has a great night. Two field goals. Kicked other field goal. But now we're only down six points. And as you remember, LSU has not scored since the first quarter. I was thinking if, if you could have gotten that last touchdown and Matt kicked that extra point, he would have been the hero. He would have been the hero. He sure would have. But he did a great job. You know, Matt's just had great kickoffs and doing the things we asked. And here comes their offense. But, you know, you'll see not much of offense on their part now uh, uh, in the second half as our defense was, was, a, was a good match for them. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and, play, and gave us plenty of times and at bats. Great, this is the third down four. What a great open field tackle he made. 
just after you saw Martavis Houston on a big hit on the sideline before it played before that. They hit a 64-yard punt. Auburn is three and out, and now they have it again on their next series late in the third. Yeah, the Marte, that uh, Laron Thomas there uh, uh, makes the stop and uh, played third, he, long. third long here. Big play. They're going up for a big third long play. Mark Smith on the pressure there. Pressure by Mark Smith, almost intercepted, and uh, they're going to get it back to him. Okay, Auburn starts the drive now, late in the third. There's a good outside run. We pick up the big yard. Here's a good run by Steve. Runs through a couple of tackles. And they'll bring him down. We're moving that football, uh, which we did at times, but uh, uh, the big plays, six. Couldn't, good plays couldn't happen. Here's a third and six. A little bit of pressure there. And you get that pressure and see we had a third and six. We had to throw downfield. Got some pressure, although it was blocked. We needed to make the downfield throw. And they, uh, they just execute a little better than we do there. In the fourth quarter now, Auburn uh, starting another drive, a 14-play drive here, but you don't get any points out of this until. Well, yeah, like I gotta say we, we keep saying that. You know, it's, that's what that's what kept happening. Big catch there by Willie Gauthier on the sideline. Fourth and one. Again, we make the quarterback sneak there for the fourth and one. We keep the drive going uh, as we get down, but you'll see we have a uh, we had something. This I thought we had been a good play, except that uh, it, it stepped out of bounds stepped right, there. Out of bounds right there. And we get it down there and pick up about two yards. Up. Now you got to go for it on fourth and long. Yeah, we get. That's exactly right. We have to go fourth and long, and we get the we run the, the, the pass. It was, you see it right here that Robert Baker. They make a good play, and uh, um, they didn't make the play. They, you know, just not quite executing well enough. But six oh six twenty five left. Now you got to hold them to get one more shot. Defense gives it. Yeah, holds them again. Three and out now, and. Uh, uh, you know, a lot of people think that, that LSU was, you know, they were afraid to throw after last year. You look at these, they, they're, they're still going after it and playing to go out there and do what they have to. Our, our defense got out there and, and sacked him because twice they lined up in, in critical situations to throw the ball. And, you know, it shows you what they were committed to win a game. And here's the last drive. 219 left in the game as you start to drive. You have one timeout remaining. One timeout remaining here and uh, probably needed one more at the end. But uh, you'll see the offense. We get into uh, our no huddle and uh, get lined up. And I think what happens is as you start running some of these, their defensive backs are a little more experienced and mature than our uh, overall receivers. And as they gave us a different look, uh, did a little better job. But you see us moving the ball down. Put Damien in here on third and two. Third and two. We put him in there to get a, just a pure run. It was a, it was a, I think it was, yeah, had to, ha had to have the first down. And so we put him in there and he picked up six or seven. And uh, now we go back with the first him this last drive. There's a nice throw and catch inside. Out of timeouts now. Now we're just fighting that clock now. We're fighting the clock. And uh, we're getting it down. Getting down inside a minute now. And there's the throw to Harold Morrow. He takes it down the sideline, picks up the little block there. And now we're down inside the... Um, with 28 seconds 28 remaining. seconds left. And now we come back. This, looking, this hurt because he didn't get the first down, couldn't stop the clock. Couldn't stop the clock. We were looking for the, the deeper route, and he can't, had to come to his underneath receiver, and he didn't stop the clock, and we had to get lined up. Of course, they, they're smart. They go slow, and we dead the ball down at the 12-yard line with about four seconds left, give us one more shot at it. If we could have got the first down, you're talking about two shots into the end zone. Mm -hmm. And then when you see how they played you on the first one, see you to play. See, right now, we run the, the flag route, which you, and what they did, they overplayed that. If you run the two, but... That's just, a, it's a game of inches, but when you put it down to the last drive, that's what happens. When you don't go out there and, 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 and do the things you need to do early, and you sit there and say, it's like, it's like the Alabama game last year, you say, well, that last play, we should have got it. Well, there were so many things beforehand. So, you know, it's one of those things, it's, it's disappointing. I, I, I don't think I've been as disappointed in a, in a game in a long time, and, and I'm real disappointed right now, but I think that's a disappointment that the, the players and we coaches are going to use to propel us to be the kind of team in the future we need to be. These things can make you better. We'll be back in just a minute. When you're an Auburn fan, every play is a big play. Every game, a big game. And every thirst is a big thirst. Okay, uh, I think the off week comes at a good time. Coach, you have a chance to evaluate and do some things that you, corrections and things you want to do? That's right. I think what we can do is, 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 is to look at this film and, and find out where we need to get better. I think we need to make some decisions about uh, uh, how we want to put our offense together and utilize that. But I think after we get watching the film, we'll, we'll probably uh, uh, say, hey, let's just execute. Just like last year at LSU, we came back with Kentucky and Mississippi State. Mm. Now you have, uh, you have Kentucky coming up in two weeks. That's right, and uh, uh, and we're going we're going to have two weeks to get ready for Kentucky. A lot of people think, well, two weeks to get ready for something else. Kentucky is going to deserve all of our time, and we've got to go out there. And uh, I think we're going to have a great execution week. We're going to beat our kids up in this off week, 
But we need to go out there and run tons and tons of teamwork mm -hmm. and see if we can get uh, the entire first and, and freshman first and second team players ready to play football and know their assignments and feel comfortable. And that's where this week's really going to help us more then maybe if we'd have won and not tried to get these guys ready, we may be doing some better things to help us in the future. Tiger Talk Thursday night. Tune Coach Bowden in. And remember the Auburn football preview on Saturday. No show, no review show on Sunday next week, but we'll see you in two weeks for Auburn, Kentucky. Thank you for being with us. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. has been the Auburn Football Review, brought to you by Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Yeah, we'll give you that one. Well, that's the 10 o'clock report. Behind Patrick Nick, both ends are split away. Here is Nick faking the pitch and rolling out, setting up and throwing to the tight end. He's got it at the 15, to the 10, to the 5, down the sidelines. It's Andy Fuller. Touchdown, Auburn! There's the deep snap out of the shotgun, the shovel pass to Davis. 30, 25, straight down the middle, 20, 15, 10. Davis to the 5. Davis wrestling a tackler over the goal line. We, 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 we worked hard last week, and we worked hard, and, and we came out here and played like we had to play. We played like we had to play. That's as good a first half as we've played in a long time around here. 35 to 7. Whatever sloppiness in the second half, probably offensively is half my fault. I'm, I'm, I ain't confident. I'm, I'm too busy thinking about something else. And, and y'all did a great job. Did a great job. Now, men, that just gets us back now. That just gets us back now. Now, we got a four-day week till Thursday. There's no doubt. We got four-day week till Thursday now, and that's prime time now. That's prime time. We got to we, we got to go tomorrow. We got to get your rest and got to go tomorrow, man. We got a long week after that. We got a longer weekend after that. Man, let's have a great week. Let's have a great week. That's the key. Have a great that loser ain't no fun. That loser makes me sick. Let's go out there and do it one more time again next week. Great week of work. And Thursday night, let's come out here and play Auburn football. The Auburn Football Review. The Tigers got it done early last night, rolling to a 42 to 21 win over the University of Kentucky. The uh, big key was that uh, scoring every time they had the ball the first four or five times. Coach. Well, we really we came out just on fire, and we really in the off week put some things in I think that are going to help our offense. But you know, I told our players again, things are never as bad as they seem or as good as they seem, mm -hmm. somewhere in between. And I think that's the story of this week from the previous game. And so. We were excited about it. We've got a ton of little mistakes, Craig. In a big win, you, you, you ignore the fact, a lot of penalties, a uh, lot, of, lot of things we've got to get better at. But, buddy, it's just so nice to win instead of lose. Yeah, it certainly is. Three uh, freshmen made starts last night. Their first starts uh, of this football season. And we begin uh, our player interviews with Ryan Taylor, who made his first start as a freshman. I knew uh, like 12 o'clock today, between 12 and 1. I knew officially when I came into the locker room, the coach told me that I'd start. Uh, the way they can run the football, they put some pressure on you guys. Tonight. Yeah, they did. They um, they have a good running back, Mo Williams. But defense, I felt like they handled it on the first half. Now you rushed for 100 yards, you know, uh, but we, we glad to come out with a W. That's all what counts. Uh, they came out and threw a lot of short outs and hitches, and um, they didn't run the option as much as we planned, and they didn't run as many flags and passes either, so they um, changed up their game plan a little bit, and we had just had to adjust to it. Kickoff return starting to come around, because I hadn't been doing so good, you know, earlier, so uh, hopefully next game will be, be a whole lot better. Be like the last one. They were behind me. Um, I got the opportunity to play, and uh, they were behind me, and they covered Shannon and Jason covered my back quite a few times tonight, so I need to give them a hug. <laughs> and we had a long time to prepare for it, a long time to look at our mistakes from, from LSU, and I think that um, you know, we definitely offensively um, rebounded well, and, and now we're back on track. And they particularly played the uh, corner jump, Tyrone Goodson, and when I saw it close my eye, 
I knew I could be wide open. It's all about Pat giving me the ball, and he got it to me. I caught it, and I ran in. Beat that guy about the five yards. Yeah. Did you feel good? Leg or something? What? I don't know what I did. It just felt good getting the ends on it. Ran a little shovel pad, you know. He was working on it all week in practice, and they thought it would be open. And uh, coach told me just, you know, ran it and stayed behind the tackle, but the uh, guard, the pulling guard, and just, you know, hit it, hit it straight up the middle, and that's what I did, and, and it worked. Commonwealth Stadium, uh, Lexington, Kentucky, as we get into the uh, first half, Coach, uh, I, I can't imagine what it must mean to the players to drive up to stadiums on the road and see thousands of authentic Auburn fans there. Uh, and, and I tell you, the, the, um, after a loss like LSU, and you, and you really want look, I mean, we go in and we see this. We go in everywhere, and there are more Auburn fans than there are LSU. People, y'all, are the most, it's the most intimidating thing to the opponents and the most encouraging our players. And I, I don't know how it started, but it's the, it's the greatest thing I think our fans do is to go up there two hours early. And the first thing our players see, no matter where they are, mm -hmm. is a sea of Auburn. And, uh, and what, a, what a great feeling that is. And, uh, and, and we come out going to town. There's a guy, we, he hold a good sack. Well, I watched Gannon Sutter. What a way to start. He gets him a sack right there. Uh, great pr pressure from Mark Smith from the outside. And he comes back, and there's Saul. Their punter gets one right in the belly and drops him, and Shannon gets him another one. <laughs> and was, I mean, those are two big plays, and they, they make things happen. And uh, what a great start now, and uh, as we get the ball back. And you'll see offensively, the thing that we've done, we've been, there's short yards where we got our three tight end offense, and Fred Beasley, who rushed about 60, 65 yards on nine carries. First of many third down conversions there. Now here's Patrick Nix throwing a lofting a pass to uh, uh, Andy Fuller for a touchdown. And, just a wonderful job there, but we were able to mix things up uh, uh, and keep Kentucky off balance. Mm -hmm. The corner went with the uh, wide out and left him open. Huh? Well, we had a little diff different play, gave him a different look. The corner bit up on the, on the, on the wide receiver and the tight end did the little flag route behind him. And we kept a lot of pressure on defense now. First half, we got two sacks first half, and that really put them in the hole the entire night. The second half, we got no sacks. We get, didn't, when they throw, we didn't get him in the ground, and so they changed their style. And here's a fine back, Mo Williams. And it's funny, there's two fine backs. You know, Mo Williams had 160 yards, but he and Steve Davis had the exact same number of yards per carry. Mm -hmm. Both average six, and Steve had a shuttle pass for 40 yards mm -hmm. that counted as a pass, but it was actually just a draw. That should be a run. You're yeah, right. that's right. It, it, it was a draw. Now, Harold Morrow probably could play for a lot of people. Harold had a super night, too. Runs and catches well. First of two third and ten conversions in this drive. Well, we're right doing here. our no-huddle uh, uh, offense right here, and here's a screen on third and ten. We were nine for third on third down. Uh, I think we were two for 13 last week and yeah. we get the LSU. So third down is a critical, but you had too many third longs this week. Another third and 10 coming here. Nice comeback by Willie Doshe. Really concentrates well. Does a good job. Made a little face mask there at the end and Willie really caught six passes. On the goal line now. Watch this offensive line. Boy, there's uh, Kevin Cummings started for his first game. Kevin from Opelika on that tackle spot started his first game. Did a great job. Real proud. He's one of the hardest working linemen. They really overpowered right there. Uh, we had 270, I believe, yards rushing. They didn't run much option, and I think the defense expected them to run. Much. Yeah, we really worked for their option, they, and they came off that. Jason Miska made uh, several big stops. I saw him time and time again. There's Jason right there, along with everyone else uh, uh, in the interior playing well. Yeah, it was Derek Robinson in on that tackle. Yeah, their well. most fair yardage was either Mo, Mo on, the, on the zone running play. And there's reverse. Robert Baker better hold that football, but he is... Robert's a reckless player. He's very talented, as y'all know, but... Robert's reckless. I've got to find a way to control his concentration because he'll drop a punt. Scares me to death, but he does make big plays. Mm -hmm. There's another fine pass that uh, Patrick made to Andy Fuller. You just you wish you could get the ball to Andy more. You wish you could get the ball to Steve more. The key is we're just going to have to be stuck to getting the ball to everybody a little. And I think that's what we're going to have to do. There's that. There's uh, that, 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 that's kind of just a pass. Mm -hmm. But that's, I mean, that's, that's so he's a really a draw play. Isn't well, yeah, it's a draw. It's just you shuffle the draw. He, so he got 120 yards on 13, 14 carries instead of not 85. But Steve Davis is, having a, is doing a great lot of the power and the speed here. And, uh, mm. and, and he's going to tie in perfectly with what we do. He headed right at Vic, our cameraman, just ran right at him. <laughs> I've never seen Vic move so fast. <laughs> 21 nothing now. This is, the, this, this is disappointing here because I thought it was a great play by Dale McGee. And I, I, I guess uh, I'll have to see the, the, the game film, uh, mm. my study film, to see where he actually pulled off. There's their fine running back breaking. We just missed the tackle right there. Uh, and once he got, gets his momentum going, 
you can't stop him at the goal line. Aided by a couple of major distance penalties there on the board. But all yes. the, you return so quickly in two plays. Two plays. Well, there's one guy, Fred Beasley, and, and of course behind him, Kevin uh, uh, McLeod have made our fullback. You know, we, Montgomery's given us the, the best blocking fullback I've ever had last year, and really probably as good a running fullback I've ever had. And so it's a nice and Joe situation. Frazier. Well, there's the pump and go. And, and another big play. And it really hurt them. They came back and scored a touchdown to get themselves back in the game. And in two plays, we score again. Uh, the key to all this is execution, people. I mean, we, we, we're mi changing direction offensively, but then execute. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and yet, things are never going to be as good as they were that first half all the time. But they're never going to be as bad as they were either all the time. So we've got, there's a great Jason Misk, another big mm -hmm. hit. Proud of, proud of him. When people don't go to four wides and we have to nickel some of our linebackers, he plays a great game. Good hit there, a lot of pressure. Anthony Harris made the hit. Dale McGee breaking it up there. Our, 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 our secondary, for what we give up in underneath passes, we don't give up a big play. And the answer is somewhere in between. Damien Craig again scrambling for a, a good first down there. If uh, Damien got some real good playing time there sure also. Did. And we mix him in with the entire offense. Had and, uh, some success, too. He was four for six throwing the football and, and, and had some big runs. Here's a mistake on their part. They had two kicking game uh, breakdowns. Now, see, people say, well, you should have scored. He should never have picked it up. He should jump on it. You're not allowed to run with a fumble on, in the kicking game. And so you uh, um, should have just chopped on it. And there's a boy, just Fred, just powering oh, up the middle. The of the line was really Doing funny. a great job in there with the entire offensive line. There's Leonard Thomas along with Jason Taylor and Kevin Cummings and Willie Anderson and Shannon Robeek and Andy Fuller up front. Did a good job. Boy, Willie Gauthier came back for that one real nice. Uh, down near the goal line. He had six catches, like I said. Fourth down now. And here we put Damien in, I guess. You know, people say, well, like my wife was saying after the game, everybody knows he's going to run. I said, well, Cheryl, <laughs> he's a quarterback. He can pass it. <laughs> no matter what you do, they have to defend the pass. And so he goes in there on, and, and gets the last touchdown. And we really want to get that score because 35 to 7 is a little different than 20, 28 7. It, it's kind of one of those things where now they got to score four touchdowns to get back in the game. And, and again, uh, it was just a super first half. Not over, but it's comfortable. Yes, it really was. We'll be back in just a minute. Of course, that is a Thursday night game this week. Auburn and Mississippi State Thursday night at Auburn. Let's move now into the second half of play. That uh, You score uh, all, what, five times you have the ball in the first half. So. Yeah, the second half now, we, we, we put a good drive on to start with. We came up again. We want to continue to mix it up some. Uh, you do lose a little concentration. You, you come out in the direction, you say, we're not going to lose concentration, but you do. I do, myself. Uh, uh, but we still start to move the ball. There's two super good plays that we had. We start to have penalties. For what reason? You don't play differently, you start to have penalties. Kevin McLeod, a great run by a fullback. We're moving it right back down. We'll, we'll uh, uh, get a penalty, and we'll have to kick a field goal. And, 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 and Matt line drive, and it got blocked, but not so much a blocking problem. He, he kicked a low kick. Uh, kick. Uh, and then they come back and score. And, uh, a little nervous right here. Coach. Well, I get so irritated that people run naked on our goal line and our corners who couldn't, I mean, they're too far back to ever stop a touchdown on a two-yard line, so just cover the, the end. And, we, and we've had that happen a couple times. There's, and now we're moving the ball again because, again, we had that missed field goal last time. Uh, and uh, I don't know, we had an interception here, too. Yeah, Remember that? It was the one really poor call that I made because Pat knows a little bit better to let right, right than left. And he, he missed one up because he threw the ball inside and messed it up. And so... Uh, that's Steve Davis on another five run. This is the possession <coughs> after the interception, yeah. and this is the touchdown. Uh, yeah. This is the final touchdown. Nice touchdown. touchdown. You know, a lot of people were saying that Pat Patrick Nick was not sharp or not on against LSU and was sharp. He was. He wasn't. He, he was really played probably uh, better against LSU as far as personal. He just. I just. He gave him a lot more throws. You know, <laughs> nice little play to Fred Beasley. We he gave him a lot more night, things. Beasley, had a Beasley great is. Night. I tell you, he's a very, very versatile fullback. He and Kevin McLeod are the type to win. And that's, how, and that's how we're supposed to block the goal line there. That's how we're supposed to put a hat on everybody there. Jason uh, Taylor had a great... Jason has a great kick out there. Carl Levine got his first uh, play in time. We've moved the offense. He's our wham back, our big third tight end who blocks in that situation. He's now really a tight end. Uh -huh. And uh, then we kick off to them again. Uh, because number 55, you'll see him a lot on special teams. Well, Keo, I mean, these guys, these young guys, they want to find a way to make an impact on our program and in, in, in every one of your games, including your Speaking special of teams. impact, how many freshmen did you play last night? Well, we started three or four. We, we, these guys can play again. You know, Jimmy uh, Bumble Bum Bum had an outstanding game at Nose Guard. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Rose right there making the play, Dale McGee. Uh, but, but a lot of freshmen now we're trying to play as this we go. This is a fourth down and four, and they split you in score. Well, this back is a good back. I think there were two fine backs on that field, and <coughs> Mo Williams from 
uh, for Kentucky. Did a fine job. And again, uh, we don't like that. Our defense was uh, one of the top five teams in the country in scoring defense. And so, you know, our goal is to stay up there. And uh, this uh, is what you're looking for out of young Robert Baker. Right? Well, this is what he can do. I mean, this is this is just what he can do. You got to go up there and make something happen. We don't block it any better, as you can see. But all of a sudden, we average 38 yards on this kick return instead of 15. And you can't coach that. I wish I could tell you all. You don't coach return people. You, you recruit return people. Uh, then, then this guy, well, this is kind of funny. I, I, I mean, for four yards, he just kind of, uh, he, Damien Craig right now ruins me as a play caller. I do not call plays very well because I keep wanting to call only the things that let him do that stuff. Well, that will, that he, he runs make, our offense. That though. will make the tapes around the country. You can yeah. That one will be, that will be seen all yeah. around the country. But Damien can run our offense, and I can I have a hard time making myself accept that, but he's going to do fine. There's a great, great defense start picks up there, uh, and is able to contain our uh mo williams but uh, anthony harris they got to play oh that was a good play look you got a good shot at our linebackers mm -hmm. there yeah. uh marcellus marcella taking on the block uh anthony harris hitting the back and then uh martavis houston coming to make the final stop and uh this was martavis's kind of game he likes yeah martavis is, is a big league hitter but then harold morrow uh you know i mean he, he should be getting the ball more i just wish i could give everybody the ball when they want they know when you win I think everybody's happy. I, when I you think Harold, though, he, does, he doesn't mind. Harold just gets a little bit throw, a little bit catching. Great catch there by Carson Bailey, a true freshman. He's going to be a super. I really, Carson, really one of the best uh, receivers we saw out of high school. And there's Damon just faking it up and trying to get his first down. Now, you keep the ball for the final seven minutes of the game in this drive, and once you get down inside the 10, you just run it up there. Well, again, I, I mean, the thing about running a fast-paced offense, the score, if you're, if, you, if you're clicking, you got a chance to get a real big lead early. But I don't think anybody needs to go out and score at the end. Now, uh, uh, I'm not opposed to doing it. If, we're, if our second team wants to score, but I said, when Coach Curry punted the ball away, uh, he, he was telling me, I'm not going to, I, I won't take a chance if you want. I, and I felt that was what we were trying to communicate to each other because the game was over. And at that point, we the coaches were able to communicate to, uh, to each other by their actions on the field. All right. We'll be back for a final comment in just a minute. Auburn, Mississippi State Thursday night. With the uh, normal off day you take on Friday, though, you only lose one day of preparation if you move up a day, right? That's right. We will, uh, you know, have to go uh, to su Sunday. Uh, the Sunday day will be used as a practice day, obviously. If the show sh is shown after that, you'll, you, you'll know. But we could even practice on Wednesday because Thursday night game, a light Wednesday, probably will have to utilize all those. Mississippi State will be, have the same thing to deal with, and they'll be mad. They, they lost a tough game. I imagine they were thinking about Auburn a little bit because they played Northeast Louisiana. But they will be ready to play us. This is the, the key part of your schedule now, this mid-portion where you're building up for Florida. You really want to make progress from week to week. Well, I guess that everything would be a key if you lose one early. But there's no question, uh, this part we've got to play well uh, from here on out. And uh, um, it's always been that way. And uh, with the LSU loss, it even becomes even more valuable, more important. Should be a, a rocking place Thursday night uh, for the Mississippi State game at Jordan-Hare Stadium. I'm sure it'll be a sellout crowd and a great night of college football. Remember, the Auburn Network will be on the air at 5.30 Thursday night. No Tiger talk this week and, of course, no Auburn football preview this week because there is no Saturday game. We will see you then uh, next week for the replay of Auburn-Mississippi State. Congratulations, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. First down play. Nix with the play fake to the tailback. Davis. Nix is going to fire a pass complete to the 10-yard line. Breaking the tackle is Baker to the 5. Spins across the goal line. He's in there. Touchdown! Take care of business now, Greg. Take care of business. Defense, you're going to look back at Jeff and you're going to see a fine job now. You're going to see a fine job. That team did, did a lot of good things, but for a big play, they scored seven in the first half, and it was over. And it was over. Both teams came out great in the second half and put it away. Got us some turnovers, and we put it away. And it's a great win for you. Great win for you. You got sloppy at the end, but, buddy, I was, I was anxious for it to get to that point where it could get sloppy at the end. That means we're, that means we're 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 ahead of them enough to uh, to, uh, to to do a lot of substituting. 
We ain't got to say nothing about next week, though. Enough said? Yeah. Enough yeah. said yeah. about next week. Enough said about next week. Get your treatment. We had, we had a tough physical game. That's what this game's always been and what it always will be. It always seems to turn into that. Get your treatment. Men, get treatment. We don't, we don't play well if we don't practice well. Let's get our treatment, men, and have ourselves ready to go for a, for a great week of preparation. Auburn 48, Mississippi State 20. Coach Terry Bowden, it didn't seem to bother the Tigers, the two-day delay from Thursday to Saturday. Well, you know, I thought with the, with the extra preparation, we even played better. Uh, and a great crowd. Again, I want to thank all that crowd for showing up. And, and our thoughts are still with all, all the people who are still feeling the after effects of Hurricane Opal. Great day of football. And uh, so glad we played well for those fans that were able to come. All right, let's go to the dressing room now, and we talk first to Dale McGee, who probably had the toughest job on the field yesterday, trying to stay with uh, Mississippi State's great All-American, Eric Moles. We're covering Moles all day is pretty good training for next week, isn't it? Yeah, um, well, he's a big, good receiver. Um, they played well. Um, we had to get in this week and watch a lot of film and just get ready for Florida. Do they have anybody as talented as he is? I mean, they whole receiving core is talented. Um, they spread the ball out, so it's not just one key guy. We got a key on it's the whole team, so we have it tough this week. I think you held your own today. What do you think? I, I did all right. Uh, I can do better. That's the thing about our offense, it's so wide open, you know. We, we got so many weapons everywhere, so that's a good thing to have, you know. It's, it gives everybody a chance to get the ball. And it's harder for the, the defense to key on one person. I tried to, I tried to play walk. I thought he was going to over pursue, so I tried to cut it back in. But um, I looked back at it again. I should have kept the straight and just ran by him. Starting to, starting to, they're starting to go to you some on, uh, on key plays now. That, that tells me that uh, they like the way you're catching the ball. Yeah. They, they're going to me a little bit more than, than usual. Yeah. You know, things happen. You know, I think um, we'll be got blindsided or something. You know, he, he got a good legal hit. And, um, Somebody fell into Willie's leg, but, you know, that's football. 20 points, but not a bad day, huh? No, it wasn't too bad. You know, we, our offense, you know, did real well. It came out and scored a lot of points in the first half and, you know, let us rush the passer like we like to do best, and I think that helped out a lot. When you all get out on the goal line and you put Damien in, you got a lot of... A lot of options down there. Yeah, I mean, you can either run Dane or you can run straight up the middle. Or, you know, we have a variety of stuff to do. I mean, well, some of the stuff we don't hold them up for some of the big games we're coming up, you know, down the road. I knew we was going to run the ball, and I had it in my head that, you know, I was going to get some yards today. And I, it went, I really couldn't have did it without the offensive line. It's, they helped me out a lot. So, you know, it's something we've got to build on because we're going in next week. What is it? Did Mississippi State fail to recruit you or something? No, well, I, no, not really. It's, you know, it's one of those things where you have, um, you know, good games on some, bad games on others. You know, I don't know. For some reason LSU can't seem to get a touchdown for nothing. For some reason against Mississippi State, they, you know, they can't seem to stop us. It's the what the buzz. We'll make every. Let's move right into the tape now. And 78,000 showed up yesterday at Jordan Hare Stadium. <laughs> Under the circumstances, that was thought that was a tremendous crowd. It sure was. Again, I mean, I can't. I don't even have any power at, 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 at Auburn, and uh, I still don't. Uh, about 20 trees down. So thank everyone. And beautiful football day. That's the kind of weather that football needs to be played. And the defense gave some yardage up early, but big play there to, to stop and force them to a field goal that I think they missed. Didn't Here's they? a big one too. Third and ten. Oh, uh, Dale McGee, nice play, boy. I say held Eric Moles to 10 catches, but mm -hmm. he had 15 against Tennessee. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that, that unfortunately, they have the Steve Davis problem. They're having to feature one guy so much, they lose their offensive scheme. And I had to deal with that, and I think we've come to an agreement in, our, in Auburn. But there's a big play. They thought he grounded the ball, but the, the receiver, uh, I mean, the official changed his mind and should have since they found a the receiver there. Okay, Auburn did not move, uh, had a turnover on first drive. This is the second drive. You get the field goal out of this one. But you, you notice that Stephen Davis is going to be featured, it looks like, for his early coach. Well, we came out in full wide outs and got them mixed out. We went back to the eye the next time just to change up. They didn't, they didn't give us any kind of problems with their secondary support system. And so we saw they couldn't stop it. So we said, we'll stay in this until they, they slow us down and go back to the full wide. They never slowed it down. Hawkins having a great year kicking the ball. Beautiful kick, 47-yarder, his longest uh, of the year. Mostella had two sacks. Uh, Mostella's had a good day. Mostella had a good game. There's, this is the real play that really upset me because we everybody played so hard. Almost got him sacked. 
we just knock each other down, and a, the running back goes for the longest touchdown in Mississippi State history, touchdown <laughs> pass of uh, about the 83 or 93 yards. At that point, it really makes you worry because it's big plays like that that are strange. People playing people properly, put us behind. But this is where, when, you, when you're clicking, this is where the offense starts going. Nice block by Fred Beasley. Offensive line did a great job. Look at Steve go. Mm. Really a talented player. He really punishes defensive backs and makes them miss. Uh, 652 yards offensively, 330 or 40 rushing, 330 passing. Pat Nix makes a big play out of a little naked revert, naked play. We're supposed to dump it for six. He scrambles, makes something happen. Patrick Nix, 18 of 19, no, 19 of 19 in the first half. That's one right. of them to the other team. Right. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, other than the tough time we had, we uh, injured Jana Robeek, Willie Anderson. We hope that this be, play. Oh, Tremendous beautiful catch. play. This is run. true freshman Robert Baker. Catch. And great play. People that, well, you become a good coach when you have good players. I, I mean, I, you, a guy that can make plays like that makes you a good. The hardest place to call plays is the inside of 15 going in. That's and he a just, sure way to get your number called more often. That's than right. Coach. And he makes it plays. Defense comes through. All good. Andre Miller, nice stop by Andre Miller. Uh, and the defense right there. Well, again, our defense is the leading scoring defense in the conference. And uh, uh, boy, makes him make a big play. So I'm watching Bell, and he just. Oh, big hit by Larry Melvin to knock it back away. Look at Kurt. Kurt Crane, you thought he, he, he recovered it himself. <laughs> Guy gets a little excited. Kurt would like to suit up occasionally, wouldn't he, Coach? Sure would. He does a great job. And uh, uh, um, there's Patrick Nix. Nice play. Now, and, and Tyrone Goodson, who had five catches for over 100 yards. We had about uh, 12 receivers, 9 to 12 receivers catch balls Saturday. And uh, they get excited. I'm so glad. I hope, you know, it's almost like celebration. But... Dang, I'm not that, uh, some of that celebration isn't so bad. But Steve Davis, uh, uh, again, boy, you know, a, a defensive back comes up and hits him hard, and you, you wonder if it hurts them more than it hurts him. But we got our short yards, there's Damian Craig, we let him run all of our short yardage, uh, three tight end offense by himself. It gets him involved in the, in, the, in the seriousness of our game, and boy, a nice critical third down play. Patrick throws and finds his tight end wide open. It was a great job of finding his third receiver uh, that Patrick has become so good at. And again, they're so excited. Uh, uh, and uh, they've done a real good job. Mm. Like I said, line, the offensive line has done such a great job. No sacks uh, we've had pretty much uh, this year at all. They break a couple of passes over the middle, and then down on the goal line, they run There's the crossing route. That Eric, that Moles, I, I, I think, is the finest player. receiver, single receiver there is in the country. Uh, he and that one from South, South Southern Cal, I think. And uh, my hats off him because he was he's used overused. He just he's used to his body won't hold up anymore mm. every game. Nice read by the hitch, I call it. The old hitch play to the sideline. And a nice play as the quarterback can throw and pick up six or eight yards uh, on first down. Second and two here. There's Steve rolling it back. And watch, watch him take the safety. Now, that <laughs> safety hit him about as hard as a safety can hit somebody. Walt Harris, they're all American safety. I'm not sure it hurts the tailback more than hurt him. But the safety did a great job. But, but that's what a big back can do, a safety. Now we'll come again and watch the safety hitting around. Where is it? Same play, but he's not there. Because, he, you know, again, you, you got to mix it up, and, and, and I think that's why he's wow. making those plays. 28-yard run there. Well, he's just, he's just a fine, fine runner. And uh, I, I think now the entire spread of our offensive formation is done with the intent at some point of getting back to be able to utilize him. Where is nice, the sixth play here? Beautiful job of Patrick. He just fall down there. Could have made a bigger play there, but uh, Willie Gauthier had a hip corner, had to get it shot up uh, at halftime and came back to, uh, and made a nice play. Uh, so Beasley in our, in our short yardage off, it's going over the top. You've pointed this out before. It's amazing how many times you're in short yardage on the goal line. Yeah, you really, we have been, it's unbelievable how many times short yards and goal line you are, but people know we send t three tight ends in. That's what we consider short yards and goal line. Mm -hmm. Defenses make calls by down and distance, so it doesn't matter that you send that personnel in. Mm -hmm. uh, good defensive play, Larry Melton there when they tried to go over top, and we had to get another good play uh, to shut down. Their running back what was 103-yard average running in the back, leading the conference. We held him to 43 yards. The defense was against the rush, less than 100 yards. So people... That's a third and 10 play, and you hold them to about part of the first down. And, and, and make them, uh, I think, miss a field goal again there. Mm -hmm. They did miss the field goal. Going the other way now. And here we come back again. Uh, now you got now you got uh, Harold Morrow, who is, uh, does a great job for us. Now working on him a little bit, and uh, does a good job there. Again, Willie Gauthier, Shannon Robeek, both injured. Preliminary reports that they'll be they'll be back next week, but I think we're gonna have to wait and see on those. Harold won't let you take him off the uh, no, kickoff team. Boy, there's Andy Fuller caught three passes. Andy again, 
Uh, it's nice to be able to get him that ball, too. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess like, the, we can't. We feature systems. We just can't feature players that much in our in our scheme. As long as Patrick can get the ball to the right field. Now, there's a pig lead catch by uh, Robert Baker. That's big time there. He caught that ball with his fingertips down close to the ground and gets us in scoring position. Now, here's Damien. Uh, you know, if you put too many people up on that line for that short yardage run, he might do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you play him out there to cover for that naked, we're probably going to run it. So I think it's a nice addition that he can give some of his speed to that formation and, and maybe just let us run the ball at the middle easier. 31-14 halftime, back in just a moment. I don't like to be told what I can and can't do. When you come to Jordan-Hare Stadium this Saturday, be sure to take advantage of a great special from three of our Auburn Network sponsors at the concession stand. You get a Ziegler hot dog, a bag of Golden Flake potato chips, and a 16-ounce Coca-Cola for only $3.95. It's the Tiger Sponsor Special at Jordan-Hare Stadium this Saturday. And as part of the special, the Ziegler Bluegrass Band will perform prior to the game at the Auburn Network's Tiger Tailgate Show location. And we want to remind you, too, that if you get to the stadium, you need some cash. Colonial Bank makes it very easy with an ATM just outside Jordan-Hare Stadium. It, too, is near the Tiger Tailgate Show location near the south end of the stadium. The Colonial Bank ATM at every home football game. Well, Coach, I noticed you're not totally dressed today. Well, until I get power, I won't be able to see at home, and I still can't find my clothes. It's so dark, but I can't find my authentic pen. And when the power comes back, I think I'm going to find my pen. Sorry, you can't have mine. <laughs> and we'll be back for the second half in just a minute. Yes, football early this coming Saturday. The Auburn Network on the air at 9.30 for the 11 o'clock game. We move back into the second half now. Coach, 17-point uh, lead is, is nice, but not all that comfortable. Well, see, they kick off to us. Now, we've got to come out that first drive and make something happen. And we, we stay in our eye formation or normal, normal personnel. Patrick scrambles nicely there as they cover the deep ball uh, that he was going to throw. But we get to a short yardage, and there's our three tight end short yardage offense. And Steve flashes through for about six or seven yards. Again, you don't know where it's going to come from. Not always right behind that third tight end. And so a nice little mix there. We get down. But we have, a, we have, we have to kick a hill goal. But points were scored. Very important to come out there and set the tone. Uh, and we come out and kick a field goal and uh, get it right back. And here's the, look at this. Here's the phone. Now, I heard some booing out there Saturday for us doing this guy kick. Now, people... Eric Moles is the number one turn man in the country, and, and my coach made a good decision to do that. And right when everybody started getting tired of it, they fumbled. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, when you score 15 times, people hate to see if, stuff like if that. Moles goes times. 85 yards, they were really no, they, they were real bad. <laughs> but but uh, the pr problem is most people don't score 10 touchdowns in a game and have to pooch kick 10 times, two or three times maybe. So it was one of those. So a great decision by our coaches to pooch kick, and, and almost every kick was inside. The, their returns were inside the 30. Kevin McLeod goes in for the touchdown there. Good job. Boy, I, uh, uh, like I said, we were a lot of short yards. We, all, must have, we seem to be down inside the five every time. Watch Keo Spikes make the hit here. Big hit there. These, these, this number seven. He's not an All-American. Number one right behind him is, but number one never got the ball, and, uh, and I'm not going to give it to him. <laughs> uh, but a great job by to, to Keo Spikes and uh, getting in there. Defense now, the, we do a little substituting after we get ahead. Boy, I tell you, Matavis Houston jumps out there. They the entire defense stretches it out. Again, this was the leading rusher in the conference, had 42 yards. The defense held Mississippi State to less than 100 yards rushing. Good, good recovery uh, uh, by um, Larry Melton. Larry's got great speed. Eric Moles he gets tired. Now, people, he gets so tired because he run, does so many things. It, it's the poor guy is just exhausted by this time. Defense still pounding him. I see uh, uh, Mark Smith, number 90, Snick 6. Brumball in there. One of the future fans here. That was Brumball that made that tackle. There's a little draw to Fred Beasley. Nice run out of the dag out of the draw and picks about eight yards. And a little change up play there. Instead of being the eye, we jumped into the split backs and ran the draw. Now here's the big play. They do get Beasley right back. People that you know, that fullback position, they it's got to make big yards when we call it. And and Fred and uh, and Kevin McLeod do, do a great job right there. He picked up about 40 yards of offense in two plays. And That's now, a 25 now. Pick out another forward. receiver. He picks at the third receiver. Mm -hmm. See, he was looking for receiver number one, receiver number two, mm -hmm. and then comes to his third receiver. And that's where Patrick runs our offense so smoothly. And uh, here's a little rollout, and this is a pinpoint out route. Boy, about as good as you can throw mm -hmm. it down to the two-yard line. And uh, puts it on the two. Now we're going to short yard. Comes to the designated short yardage, man. Boy, don't hold that ball out there. That scares you. I, I, 
I ran a sneak, but right when I saw them called it, they were in a pinch defense. And it was a dumb, it was a wrong call, but you can't get out of it. And then with four downs, you can correct it the next time. But uh, don't stick the ball out there on first and ten, to first and inches on the goal line. Pressure, good pressure. Scott Stacy, man, he's got he's the one one of the fastest guys on our defensive front. Good pressure. I was really pleased with him. I had to get on him because he had a personal foul late. He's he's our ornery tough guy. He's a tough guy, and I like him a lot. But he's ornery. And he got a late penalty that I got on him about. But he, he really hustles out there, and he's and, and got a, a great speed for us. That our line. Fourth quarter now. Boy, a good touch pass by Damien to the fullback down the sideline. Uh, we're starting to sub a little bit here, and, and we got we got in the fourth in the high forty points wise early in the fourth. And it, Last 12 minutes, uh, and there's Damien just popping up, scrambling and making something happen, scrambling for his first down. And uh, Damien was three for four on passes and uh, uh, picked up uh, 20 or 30 yards rushing the football. And uh, he just seems to make something happen. And Harold Morrow pounds him. And of course, that, that's tough on those safeties. That's something the safeties have to tackle them over and over again. So real pleased with the power they showed there. That drive stopped on a turnover. Here's State going the other way. Good coverage there. A back thought there was a, a pass interference, but it was just close. Good play by Steel Spikes in the flush. Right now, it's important just to keep things going. And uh, Damian Hines, uh, I mean, Hines, Eric Hines Tucker, they're running well. He lost two fumbles. I know he was the only guy that was unhappy after the win. I said, don't you dare be unhappy. We'll correct that. Uh, when we win, everybody everybody has to be happy in my locker room. Cooley is the quarterback now. Uh, John Cooley makes a wonderful little play here, finds an open tight end, and... Uh, we were just running the neck and really uh, to get the quarterback to roll out and make some yards and keep the clock running and uh, makes a nice uh, throw there, but we had a penalty late and uh, allows the crowd to go home and have a good Saturday afternoon of football. And get ready for next week, which we will talk about in just a minute. Hopes would uh, depend on the Auburn-Florida game coming up. Well, it seems like everybody in this conference has, has now accepted the fact that, that Florida is, a, is going to be a contender. They've got the talent, uh, uh, a, a large population state. They play great football. And again, we come to them undefeated like we had the last two years. A great football team. We'll probably underdog some more. What we've got to put it all together and play our best defense and our best offense to win this football game. It is an 11 o'clock start at Jordan Hare Stadium. Of course, a hard sellout, and the Auburn Network will be on the air at 9.30. We invite you to join us on Saturday morning uh, early for the Auburn football preview as we look at uh, the Florida game. So we'll see you next week. They're cold. That's a 38 of first down after a gain of 14 by Davis. Nix is going to throw a wide open receiver over the shoulder corner. It's a 20 to 15 to 10. It, it was a win. We didn't, we didn't do a lot of things good, a lot of things well. Didn't score near as much as we wanted to. Uh, didn't hold them down yards-wise either like you want to, but you kept them out of the end zone. You kept them out of the end zone. You sandwiched a pretty good team between Florida and now Arkansas. And for whatever reason, we weren't our best today. But, man, you go out and you can take a 34-16 or 13, 34-13 win, you take it to the bank. You take it to the bank with a W, with a W. We can, play, we, we, can, we can play a game where we don't play our best and come out with a win like that. Uh, maybe there's something, that, there's some silver lining there. Now what we got to have, y'all know, now, now we, got, we, we, got, we got that one out of the way. We got that one out of the way. I guess we can't say more than that. We got that one out of the way. Now, now we got Arkansas. Uh, division, national TV, and we got, we got to we get ready for them. So as long as I've been a coach, I've had some of my best games after games like that where you're playing good but just ain't seem like things are going well. We have some of our best games, and that's what we're going to have this week. is the Auburn Football Review. Welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Beautiful Saturday it was yesterday at Jordan-Hare in a 34-13 win over Western Michigan.
positioned where it was between two huge games, I like 34-13, Coach. I don't care what people write and say. Well, you know, I really, I, I was, in the, the post-game talk, I was trying to think of something to tell the players, and I said, just don't worry about it. 34-13 win. Uh, we, we got through with a win, and we, when we were getting ready for Arkansas, and uh, uh, let's be happy and move on, because uh, a lot of big scores, and when you don't play your best and win like that, uh, there, that's plenty of reason to be happy. With a young defense, they played pretty much to form. They, mm -hmm. they stayed in the game, they bent, but they didn't break. To, they kept their uh, scoring defense intact. It's really unusual for me to look out there and see four and five true freshmen playing for our defense, three of them starting, and yet they give up one touchdown, uh, two field goals, and mostly just yardage between the 20s. Mm -hmm. So it's a defense that I can see. Every day I see out there, I see what Co Coach Hall is thinking and what he's doing. Uh, and so it's one of those things that's going to make us a little bit better as we go on. Let's go into the dressing room now and get some comments from some of the players. Uh, these guys were hard to shake, weren't they? Uh, they um, did a lot of different things to us, and um, I think that they uh, give them a lot of credit. They're defensive uh, coaches and uh, did a very good job for us. I think that uh, you know, gave us a lot of different looks, moving around with, right before the ball was snout. Covered you know, well, too. They covered well. Um, they're a good football team. I don't think they're giving a whole lot of credit, you know, um, from the people in the South. We don't know about them a whole lot, but, but they compete every year with Division One schools. And, you know, like Coach Bowers said, we're very happy to come out with a 34-13 you know, win. Coach can't you know, and he's going to be the star nickel. And so, you know, unfortunately, you know, we played a lot of nickel today, so I was, you know, fortunate to get out there. We're expecting a big play out of you early every week now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our defense is designed to go out and make plays and get offense a um, chance to go, put some points on the board. I really wanted to score with it, but I couldn't, so, you know, I set up with what I got. For my first start, it went all right. Uh, the guy that got in the groove real good, I didn't pan it when something went wrong, so I did pretty good. They, they did a lot of stuff out there. They, ran the draw and ran a couple of plays on the outside that hurt us a little bit, but we stuck in there and held them 13 points. They came out and played a good ball game, and they, um, they uh, prepared well for us, and they played hard, and um, give, give them good credit. Well, if Pat called a play, I said, maybe this might be another chance for me to redeem myself from last week, dropping that pass last week. <laughs> then when I, when I went off the line, I saw him blitz, and I just saw I got past the DB, and I saw Pat throw it. I just concentrated on the uh, ball, and I just blocked out the sun, and then called it, and then ran it in. I had baited the DB, and um, when I broke, I was just so wide open, and, <laughs> and that was going to be my first touchdown ever. It was all of them, but, but it was not to be. It was a nightmare. Yeah, but the third down long play was a good one to follow. I mean, I, I, I couldn't miss that at all. I mean, I, if it would have been one hand behind my back, I had I missed that first one. I had to make up for it. It, it helps us a lot because they run sort of the same style offense Arkansas runs, and we see where we stand, you know, against the same type offense going into next week. Yeah, I thought the play on the first punt was about as good as the one you almost scored on. Mm, yeah, they were, they both of them were pretty good punts. Try, just trying to get to the end zone. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got close, huh? Thought you scored, didn't you? Yes, sir, I thought I scored. Yeah, well, I think you did, but maybe you stepped on the line. I don't know. I, I probably didn't. <laughs> I hope, I wish I didn't. Catch the colonial spirit. As we move into the uh, video, oh, what a beautiful day it was yesterday. Coach. That's football. That's Man. a football Saturday. Autumn weather, cool breeze. Uh, uh, really was nice. I think everybody was enjoying it. What a, you know, it was a great, a great crowd. Look at old Frankie Sanders and having a great year in the pros. Uh, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals doing a super job. A beautiful day. You know, I, you know, we have to admit it was kind of a lackluster performance by all of us, including all of us in the stands. We enjoyed it, so let, let's be happy and move on. Third uh, and six coming right here. Defense really had a good start. You put some pressure on this quarterback, and uh, uh, we're probably a little quicker than most teams they see, and uh, uh, got pressure on the quarterback early, and we scored some points early, and you and think you got a chance to get this thing under control. Mm -hmm. So they're punting on their first possession. Uh, Boy, Robert Baker just about he comes way upfield to make that play. That yeah, was... yeah, great return, man. Makes you a better coach. And right now, right now, Robert is making punt return, kickoff return, uh, awful nice. Third and thirteen here. Big third down play. Uh, throws a little corner out to uh, Tyron Goodson. Puts us into their their territory. And then I believe we come back on the next third down play. They blow the uh, whistle on this play. It's, the ball is still live, and the quarterback has the presence of mind to go ahead and play it out. Well, he was all sides, but they, you know, it wasn't. Uh, there wasn't play wasn't blown dead. And so uh, quarterback can finish the play. We decline a penalty, and uh, and it's run. And it, and uh, it's a good call. Uh, of course, that'd be, if it was on offense, they would blow the ball de dead for a motion. But when defense is offside, 
Uh, if the play is run, they'll go ahead and run it. So good play, good pass play, puts us up seven points. All right, they, uh, they get in range for a field goal. They mishandle it, get it blocked uh, by Larry Melton. Then uh, Auburn gives up, uh, uh, gives it up on downs, and uh, they're coming back now right now. Ten minutes into the game. Mm -hmm. Well, they'll come back. They they did a good job of moving the ball. Then all of a sudden, Anthony Harris comes back, just like Florida, makes a big play early, and uh, gets the ball back to us. Now here's where we, you know. We should have scored. You know, we get a field goal, but I mean, 14 points here is a lot different. So we get a little first down and get the ball moving. But I think the, the penalty the, down inside the penalty, the penalty, the penalty that we had. Well, what happened? We got to the six-yard line, and we went to our uh, uh, short yardage, uh, and uh, defense made a call that sounded like a snap count. And uh, we, we talked to their officials, talked to their coach, and it didn't happen again. But it was enough to give you a five-yard penalty in, in, the, in the in the goal line area, and to kick a field goal. And we lined up and kick it. And we did, it's really the first time we've been stopped, but it wasn't because we didn't execute, but because of a, uh, 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 a call by the defensive lineman. They're a pretty good offensive team. They break a couple of plays. Well, they're a very, they're ve football. veteran group. This is a veteran group uh, uh, of, of football players playing us. And uh, now this team beat Miami of Ohio that, that beat, uh, I know the Northwestern's having a great year up there, and, and Miami of Ohio beat them. People, it's just a good league. And their quarterback did some good scrambling as we have everybody covered. Jimmy Brumboss there chasing along with Marcellus Marcella. Uh, it's good to see so many of the young guys play and good pressure there. They throw the little throwback where they roll out and uh, throw the tight end back. You got to cover him, but he got he broke away, uh, kind of on a, uh, a, a throwback type of play, and uh, and they cut they tied up at ten points. They got um, a turnover and a field goal. Now it's ten ten, and they are trying to go ahead in this game in the, on this series. Well, boy, it really wakes you up. It's almost like everybody's asleep. Everybody's asleep and sitting on their hands, and the players are asleep, and all of a sudden, uh, you need something to wake up. Hey, it's ten to ten. And, um, and uh, boom, with about three minutes left in the half, we, we scored two touchdowns, and pretty much the game is over there, except the final score. And of course, a big run there by Steve Davis moves it down, and uh, we follow and get a two-play drive here. Actually, this all began with three minutes to go in the half. You scored twice in the last three minutes of the half. And yeah, we got a two-play drive right here. I think the 10-10 kind of woke you up. Say, hey, we've got to go out there and play, get this game out of hand. So there's, there's 17 in two plays, and we'll come back. Defense will shut them down three, three or four plays and out, and you'll see us with a no-huddle take it right down again. Okay, here's their possession now after the, uh, after the kickoff. Going to hold them. There's a good job. You see some people there. Look at there. Nate Smith getting some playing time there, doing a good job. He's a young uh, uh, sophomore defensive lineman there with Andre Miller. Uh, did a really good job of spelling uh, uh, Jimmy Brumbaugh. Stephen McGann. Marcellus and, uh, and uh, Takeo. Takeo, of course, getting his first uh, start there. Larry Melton had a great game. Blocked two kicks and covered covered very well. Yeah, two minutes to go now as you get the football in good field position. Well, there's, and there's a good throw. Patrick Dix is running our no-huddle offense. We tried to go something with Damian Craig, but when we saw the game was going to be a little tighter early, we said this is not right. If, if Pat's number one, we're going to go with it. Beautiful throw there. Puts us down inside the 10 uh, there, and now we can go down and see if we can make something happen. We come back out. I don't know if we'll show it, but we dropped a touchdown pass, but we come back Just out. Just before that. Uh, before that, and yeah. we come in our short yardage, and Fred Beasley comes in. And, boy, this team was even gritty in the short yardage. They were they were tough. They made it hard to score. I think it took every every down to yeah. get our short yardage goal line into the end zone, but fortunately we did. 24-10 of the half. Back in just a moment. When the weekend comes, I hope you'll be pulling for the Auburn Tigers. But there's another team to watch this season, Ziggler Hanging. Auburn Network on the air at 5 o'clock because the game is a 6.30 start Saturday night in Little Rock. The game will be televised nationally on ESPN. As we go back to the second half, Coach, uh, not an artistic success, but your defense got a lot of good play against some uh, good Pass football formations you know, and a good football Well, team. we were up 14 points, 24 to 10. Uh, we'd like to score get a little bit further. Uh, but as, the, as they came to play, they came and we came out, they were doing a lot to, to, to control the ball and get uh, time off the clock. And so I said, well, we shouldn't worry too much. They're, they're content to run a lot of time off the clock. They're not scoring. And so I guess all you gave up were nice stats. We really just had a day where we didn't do anything for our stats. And I'm not sure how important they are uh, other than how you look this to the conference or third in the conference and that. But uh, you have to remember this: uh, the Arkansas is watching all this too. And that's right, and you're and you're and you're and you're thinking about all that. So at some point, some things getting into your mind that maybe don't don't uh, uh, don't serve you best for this particular game. But a great job right there, John Cohen, uh, stopping the punt on the one yard line. 
And uh, this pretty much put them in a hole to get us to a situation where we kick our first field goal here. It's, look, look at Jimmy Brumbaugh there. So close to a, a, a safety. I thought it was in the goal, in the end zone. But again, uh, they put, gave it to him a few inches out, and they get it out just enough to punt. This is a third down play after they move it out a yard or so. He bounced well. Big hit. Look at true freshman Ryan Taylor. I've just mentioned there's Theo Spikes, true freshman. Jimmy Brumbaugh, true freshman. Martavius Houston, true freshman. Boy, they're uh, everywhere. Well, about five of them starting. And actually, once you count uh, uh, Dan Evans as a nickelback, nice run by Fred Beasley. Runs through that and uh, uh, picks up good yards there and now into their territory. Because of that great defensive stand, we're starting at the 50 and kick a field goal there and add another field goal. Again, Matt Hawkins, uh, what a year. He's, I think, 10 oh, for 11 yeah, now with one block amazing. and no misses on field goals. He's got to be one of the top in the country. Uh, and his punts are very well. Mm -hmm. Quarterback scrambling now. The quarterback did a good job of scrambling there. This is late in the third quarter. Martavis Houston, him and uh, Jeff, uh, Terry Solomon. Third and seven coming uh, here. Continue to put the heat on him. There's good heat by James Roscoe. Larry Melton making a big play. And again, it's so good to see him having a big play. Yeah, Florida yeah. picked on him last week, but he was hit perfect. He blocked two kicks, and he, uh, he covered perfectly in his coverage. And here's Robert uh, Baker uh, doing a great job of making people Harry. miss. Fall Locked down the goal down. line and boy, almost getting in the end zone. And you did Robert, step on the Robert, line, you did <laughs> step out of bounds. I heard your post game. You did step out of bounds there. Uh, but he is an exciting player and uh, uh, makes things. I hope there's Baker boys out there and there's not just one because he's fabulous. This is a fourth down play. Well, we, we got talked about it a long time. Well, we had jump took four plays to get in from the four and and and. Uh, I was stubborn enough. I was going to run our play, and they're going to get that one play, and we can't make that one play score against Western Michigan. I was going to, and I was a little too stubborn there, but we got in. And, uh, boy, good job there. Jimmy Brumball again busting through it. Uh, boy, he's becoming, I think he's a surprise, uh, uh, not only to us, but some of the other people in Florida that recruited him against us. Uh, he's just becoming on. Fourth uh, down and four. Boy, Terry Solomon put some quick pressure. Martavis Houston, a real big hit uh, right there. And, uh, Super job there of getting contact on him. And of course, Shannon Subtle there with the football. Their next series coming up now. And they, I'll tell you, this team will be with the ball. Well, here's, uh, here's uh, Jimmy Brumball again, and uh, forcing the quarterback to throw the ball away. And uh, unfortunately, this is a game where they're just moving the ball some, and there's a little bit of a holding on uh, Terry Saul, but he kept on fighting it and gets the sack uh, to move him back. Here comes their attempt at a 35 yard field goal. Watch. Milton there Melton, right the there off the side, blocks the kick, and uh, gives the offense the ball again, uh, stops the drive. So again, good finish by the defense. Uh, uh, nobody laying, nobody, you know, just resting and taking it easy, but still trying to make things happen. Auburn's next possession at the 32. Got a first down here, but the drive will again stall. Well, we, we, we laugh in the eye formation, and we, and we get pretty stubborn at times you know, about running that ball. Picky little five-yarders. Well, we, we get stubborn, we're going to run that ball, and they're playing, you know, an eight-man front, four linemen, four linebackers, and then they play what we call a robber, which puts their free safety up there that gives them nine, and so you don't have any anybody to block uh, two or three of those people. This little fella here had a good game, nice little run, comes back across the game. You'll see him running down, and I believe we've got uh, Leron Thomas there and, and Tyrese Williams, who's now playing defensive back most of the time. Former wide receiver. First and goal, starting at the... Uh, Great hit by Keo Spikes on uh, their, their fine running back of Vaccaro. Second uh, and goal here. Was a senior running back that ran real well. And, and you saw Keo come out. And there was good pressure again there. Big play there by Andre Miller. Uh, so glad to see him having a good year and working hard there. Third and goal. Boy, another big hit there by Mark Smith. Uh, again, no yard is there as they're trying. They just try to get the, into the game. The they decide zone. they call time outside. They're going to go for it on fourth down rather than kick the field goal. Boy, there's good pressure. Ricky Neal missed that one. And then Tyrese, I wish he'd had a little more defensive back uh, experience because he could have li lined it up and kneeled it for 20 yards. But first game of him playing any defensive back gets an interception. And so I congratulate their coach and their team. You know, it was a fan. You know, I appreciate it. There's a, there's a common courtesy. They're you players. In that, you coached in that I coached league. in that league. The, the players, they'll come up and, and, and shake your hand and, and say, and, and just, they want to take pictures and get autographs after the game. There's just a, there's a traditional thing they do there where the coach, the players have to shake each other's hand and talk to each other uh, that I enjoy because, you know, I, I mean, I good, they, yeah. instead of them saying, hey, we could have beat y'all if we played better, and us saying, well, you know, if we played better, we'd run y'all. Pretty much everybody appreciates a good hard-fought football, hard football game. And, uh, uh, and we got that Saturday.
Back in just a minute with a final word. Tonight. Well, they keep getting bigger. I tell you, if a national TV game, uh, the, the the division championships probably on the line in this a, a few games. Uh, number one defense in the conference. They've had the week off. They've had the week off. Number one defense in the conference. Uh, uh, it'll be big. It'll be it'll be a big game and very exciting. We're looking forward to it. This is what you're waiting for. This is what's fun. Uh, I hope everybody uh, that can get a ticket gets out, Auburn people, and drive safe. And uh, let's get going. Auburn Network on the air at 5 o'clock. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Coach Belton's apparel provided by The Locker Room. First look at news and weather. The eye is set for Nick under center. He'll toss it to Davis on third and two. Big hole. 15 to the 10. He's at the five. He cuts it back in. He's over. Touchdown, over. Good, good job. Got, 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 got that game out of the way. A little business-like, and, it, and it's Georgia week already. It's Georgia week already, man. You got we, we, we talked about 180 minutes left, and you got 60 down. The next 60, you get even bigger. Dedicate yourselves. Dedicate yourselves. There ain't no, there ain't nothing to talk about. You know what the deal is. You know what the deal is. And let's, let's have a great Georgia week. And welcome to the Auburn Football Review. Homecoming on the Plains yesterday, Auburn 38, Northeastern Louisiana 14. Coach Terry Bowden kind of like uh, going to work on Monday. You had to go and get it done and get on to the next thing. It was so cold out there, you want to get off that field, you run the ball, the clock goes out. No, <laughs> and No, that wasn't the game plan. The game plan really was Arkansas, we, we wanted to run some mixed in with our passing, but we got so far behind, we had to throw. We needed to, 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 but to tone up the running game, and this was a team that you needed to run on. And so that kind of got us through this game, doing the one thing we needed to work on, running game. And, and now as we go on to Georgia, we at least have the ability to, to look back with some good experience in the running lately and the passing to feed back on. But a good win for the football team. Unusual situation, two 100-yard rushers. Well, you know, it was, it was funny. The biggest scare of the day was not if the, the score was going to be any different. The outcome of the game was, was Steve Davis going to get up. He hurt his knee, and mm -hmm. I think I, I was afraid. He was afraid. And when, he, when, it, when it got, then before he got better, uh, Eric Hines Tucker got 100 yards, 200 yard tailbacks, uh, great, a good solid day for the defense of holding the score down. Uh, uh, they got better Saturday and they gave great effort and uh, good solid win and it, and it gets us ready for the next one. For the big one coming up this Saturday. We'll, well, let's talk to some of the players now and we'll be back in just a minute. We did what we wanted to do today. The third tailback came in, did a good job. Did a great job. Did a great job. You know, with Harold not being able to dress today and um, and, and Steve going down, you know, Tuck had to come in and do a great job. He did. He came in there and ran the football very hard and, and got the yards we needed. It was a chance for me to step up and show what I can do. I just took the opportunity. First half, um, I got a knee injury, and um, but it's all right. The coaches weren't going to let me play the second half, but I, I tried to I convince him to play. And the Dallas gave him to go ahead, so, you know, I made the best of it. We was trying to pick up the first down, but um, Andy broke free, and I made it, he made a spectacular catch from me. It was, the throw was behind him, but he made a good catch from me. Basically, what we did, we just went back to basics. Uh, you know, we're getting prepared for the next two weeks. It's going to be two important weeks for us. Still a big game for us trying to get to a, a good bowl, so we're going to dedicate this week to Georgia and just have a good, good uh, week of practice and get ready for Georgia. We played pretty good at times, and you know, at times we gave us some plays. Next week, we definitely can't do that. These last two games were real big for us. We had to go ahead and play a six-minute ball game. I think we played well as a whole. We just got to get more three and outs, um, cut down a little bit plays. Um, where people just messing up here and there, um, but we'll be okay. As we move into the uh, first half of play, uh, crisp autumn afternoon at Jordan-Hare Stadium. What a day for a football game. Those young ladies are, are, 
are, are a vital part of the Auburn program, Coach. Well, our Tigerettes and Tiger hosts do a super job. The, the great recruiting class we had this year that has come in, uh, a lot of it do the great uh, uh, ambassadors and, and the ladies that, that, that show them around the campus. The Eagle is ready, and uh, Auburn gets a turnover on the first possession, and here is uh, Northeast with first and goal at the 10. You know, it's funny, that, and, and we don't show that interception, but Pat Nix, people say, well, gosh, what a terrible throw. He ran a perfect throw. We had a, we had a busted route. Mm -hmm. The guy went the wrong way. He throws it right in the hole, and the defense intercepted. But the defense came back and stopped him uh, and held him out of the end zone and uh, kept it from being just a, a situation that got, us, uh, that got them excited. They faked the field goal on fourth and uh, ten. Nice call here. I mean, they had me think they really said, you know, you think this, little, this team's going to want to get some points out of this one over. They say, no, let's go for a big one. And I thought it was a nice call by that team. I, I, we'd have tackled him and not let him in, though, but he would have gotten the first down. Mm -hmm. Good job. Third and three here. First third down play. There's the uh, nice throw to Steve Davis for the first down. Did a real good job. Here's the first and ten at the 28. Now, Steve's going to, this is where he's going to uh, strain the knee and scare him and the coach and <laughs> a lot of other folks. Well, you'll see he strains his knee here, and, and right there, he turns that knee, and you see his, 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 his right knee. Uh, and it's bothering him, and we really were concerned there. The doctors felt like he, he stretched a little bit, but uh, the muscle a little bit, but I tell you, when you're that good, you a uh, nice job. Throws it to Kevin McLeod, who had a nice catch and run. And uh, uh, he had a real nice day. Our backs had a real good day. Uh, they were stopping the inside run, so everything came to break out. Errol side. Morrow's not dressed, so here's Eric Hines Tucker. Well, it's nice to see Eric Hines Tucker. You, he's a real, watch him, he's just kind of a jerky runner. I think it's a nice, it has a nice change when he runs with Steve. Steve's a power speed runner, and this guy is a change of direction with quickness. And uh, really changes, gives him a different look, and uh, did a fine job. He'll dip in and, bla and break oh. out now mm. and good score block. nicely. With a good block by Hicks Poor there, uh, at Beasley there, so congratulate him. But that was a good drive. We had some nice drives. Uh, Northeast did not turn the ball over to the last series. And every time we had the ball, we had to drive the entire length of the field. And they didn't give us any cheap touchdowns. And uh, they did a good job of holding the score down. Uh, uh, they really played a, a good, solid game uh, and did not turn the ball over. And this guy... ball with a tackle on the previous play. And Scott, Scott Stacey. Stacey had a couple of sacks. He's, he's, a, he's an emotional player. He's really added a lot of emotion to our defense and, and getting, teaching the young guys how to play hard. Uh, and we had about five sacks. Good pressure put on the quarterback. Willie Gauche, Gauche is now the receiver, I guess, everyone looked for since he had those seven. Gauche is kind of the go-to receiver. Mm -hmm. Well, he showed dependability uh, and toughness to be out there and play. And here's uh, Eric uh, again making a good run and making people miss. And uh, with uh, Harold Marr out this week, we've got to try to get him healthy for the Georgia game. Uh, uh, Eric showed that he can uh, do the job and... Uh, Hawkins makes another field goal. Uh, other than the two that he's had blocked, uh, the two long ones he's had blocked, he's 100% this year on field goals. So a real good year again for Matt Hawkins. He's had to kick some kickoffs. We did not have uh, good kickoffs uh, uh, consistently by our kickoff man, and so Matt Hawkins will probably go back and kick off the ball uh, uh, the rest of the year. So they have to punt, and here comes Auburn on at the 37 on first and 10. Nice little misdirection. The people wonder why you run the little naked off of the sweep. Some games, some games, the, the next team may decide it's not what you do at one time. But if they play inside too much, you'll go ahead and do that a little bit. There's Damien. This is a fourth down and two, and uh, we ha we go ahead and go for it. Uh, sometimes you don't have the guts to do that in a big, big game. Mm -hmm. you know, say, well, I bet you wouldn't do that against Alabama <laughs> or Georgia. I don't know if I would. I'd do it against Northeast. But, uh, Blow them back here. Yeah, those aren't gutsy calls when you've got a team you know you're probably going to beat. But it's a good power play there, and we, and we go ahead 17 and Kevin McLeod gets the touchdown. We're late in the half now on second and six at the 37 for Northeast. Well, a good team effort. Now, good drive there, a good tackle by the defensive front. And uh, uh, um, Marcella was Marcella. there first. They're making the first hit. Jason Miska and Spike now are rotating every other series practically, getting a lot of work together and working good there. I'm glad to see that work out good. Uh, nice coverage there, but uh, don't get too close. It was a good job of covering the receiver, forced him to a field goal. And uh, this is it. Watch. We this one we blocked, but the ball crossed the line of scrimmage, and, and we didn't know it, but it hit one of our guys. If they would have picked it up, it would have been first down their ball. We did not know that. They didn't know it, so they never touched it. We never touched it. It goes first down our way. Uh, uh, but you tell your people, ball goes across the line of scrimmage, you get away from it. But as it went across, it hit somebody, and nobody saw it. It's a live it's, ball. He can it's pick a it live up. ball. They can pick it up and get on it for a first down if it's first down distance. Mm. So uh, interesting little thing. We saw more little rules that we didn't know were going to happen <laughs> in that game. Back in just a minute.
morning, turning a little cooler, the Auburn Network has a great way for you to show that you're an authentic Auburn fan. It's the great-looking, authentic applique sweatshirt. And for a limited time, they are now just $34.95. Now, that's a savings of 25%. These sweatshirts for the game. This is an interesting time for these young men, Coach. Uh, it, uh, their, their college experience is coming to a close. It's, uh, it, it ends a, an important part of their lives and puts them into another important part. But I'm not sure any group of seniors have done more for this Auburn football program over the years than what these men have done the last few years. And, uh, right. I mean, I'll, I, they're special, special guys. I, I just want them to have the best uh, uh, in the remaining part of the season because of what they've done these last years. Uh, and just think what they expect. Hey, they got here to a program that, because it was a big winter, and all of a sudden the uh, probation, uh, the lost seasons, and they, and they let them out of it before it even started. It was over. And uh, I'm so dang proud of them. Uh, uh, they're, 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 they're real, and they're, and they're special. Michelle Donovan is the homecoming queen being presented uh, at the halftime. Members of the court, we should mention uh, Seal Morris is a, was a member of the court. She's a head cheerleader and a member of the Auburn Network, by the way, Coach. So we had to... Well, yeah, it's a sad that. thing as a football coach. I've never seen a homecoming court thing because you, you never go out at halftime. And yeah. so it's one of those things that I enjoy seeing on the TV show uh, because I've never seen the band play, uh, and I'll never see the uh, homecoming. And I hope you never do. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> when Second half of play, uh, Northeast comes out, gets a good drive going, uh, caches a couple of third downs, and uh, moves in for a score. It gets kind of serious for a moment here, Coach. Well, I tell you, we, you, you know, you have 17 nothing, and the whole, the whole halftime talk, you say, what a great... What, you know, Go put, hold them three and out. Let's, they get the ball three and out, hold them. We'll go down and score the game though we play a second team. Well, we, they want to, but they go, can, they go down the field and score. And they, and they just down the field and score on a, on a big, long touchdown drive. And this is where it could have gotten uh, uh, tough, but the offense came through, running the ball. Uh, Steve Davis comes back. There's a, a Fred Beasley. Two long drives, two touchdowns, and, and, and the game's over. And so... Uh, when the defense came through the first half, they came through, and the offense had to come through the second half. Here's Pat Nix. Uh, and again, that's why I mentioned the interception. He had a, he had a real good day. He mm -hmm. had no problem. He, every, throw was a, he was, every throw was an excellent throw, and the first one, he didn't, he didn't even have a mistake there. Did a good job. Well, uh, Tyrone Goodson on a little uh, uh, out routes and picking up good yards for the first down. He's a third and two now, and, and uh, break it with some great blocks. Good blocks, and Steve just hit north and south right there. Nice cut he made there. And touchdown. It was just a good, solid run. And uh, uh, we'll see it again. Shannon Robeek gets a good one there to break him, and then Beasley downfield, and then Andy Fuller gets the last one. Well, that does a good job. I tell you, when you can, uh, uh, when you can run him, uh, and, and they have success, mm. and that's the game plan, boy. It's, it's the nicest way to go if you can do it. Now the defense gets. Uh, Boy, look at that skank tackling, buddy. It's I tell you, that, up on this it's right. getting, de Defense is about enthusiasm. It's about intensity and gang tackling. And, and I love to see that. They are play, those kids are playing hard. Good sack there. Uh, Terry Solomon, good sack out of junior Terry Solomon. Most of this defense is back. They've got just a few seniors out there. Uh, a couple of linebackers and one defensive back. But I think we've got eight starters back on defense. And uh, these guys getting better every day. Mm -hmm. uh, short yeah. kick. Uh, put a little pressure on. Had a short kick that bounced backwards. So we get the ball about midfield. And then in just a few plays, I think the offense is able to put the ball in the end zone. Nice little quick hitch. When you throw the little six-yard hitch and you can make a first down, that's kind of what you want. Uh, and a good first down play call to keep it mixed up. Here comes a reverse. Reverse, real good, nice little re change of direction. Reverse here, picks up about six or seven to eight yards. Uh, sometimes people think a reverse has to score to be a successful play. It just barely needs to get five or six yards and keep the defense off balance. And there's Steve, watch this move here. Mate runs over that, that guy. Uh, who would probably go home and tell his grandchildren he got <laughs> run over by Steve Davis. And a uh, uh, real good finish uh, for Steve Davis. So it's 31-7 late in the quarter. Here's the last play of the quarter coming up as they try to get something going. Well, again, this, this, this offense scored 36 points against Mississippi State and beat them. This offense is one of the top offenses. That's why... Sometimes when I, when I talk about this team, they weren't as strong a defense. Uh, we should score some points and runs. This team was a very strong offense that throws this quarterback and this receivers will be in the senior bowl. And uh, that's why I was, I was so pleased with our defense, the way they play. I thought it was a great job. And uh, uh, people don't know that Western Michigan had a great defense and an and a, and a average offense. This team had a great offense and an average defense. There's the turnover, the only one they had, but the defense kept them there. 
and now the offense had to get something going. And we, but, but we had a penalty. We had a great run, and then we had one of our linemen. It started out with a first down. Steve makes about 15 yards first play. He makes about 15. I think we're going to see it the second play. Uh, here comes the, here comes the uh, penalty and, play. And watch Shannon Robeek. He doesn't ever do it. Watch him right here. He puts his arm around right there. And that's a hold. He knows it, well, he, and he doesn't do it much. Another first down, but that threw us back into a long yard and uh, had to punt. If, you, if you're going to run the eye formation, you cannot have penalties. You can't pick up third and 18s or third and 16s uh, in the eye formation. It's got to be perfect. Good punt roll there. Uh, down the ball there. John, John uh, Cohen uh, down the football. And now we're going out. We had great pressure, but now, boy, good scrap there. Another good catch. I think it's to Scott Stacy again mm -hmm. from Prattville. Did a super job there. Another uh, a good effort by Scott. Nice hit there. Oh, there's, there's the, the short yard scramble. Their quarterback has good speed. You see Terry Solomon's speed chasing down, mm -hmm. but he picked up the first three. Ryan Taylor, another true freshman, who had to go in there and play a good bit. The uh, top receiver finally gets open and, and, and makes a big play, but he, was, he, he was, was covered by Shea, but yeah. Yeah, he was, I tell you, people, I don't know how nervous I was because of the skill of their receivers and their quarterback going in this game. And, it's, and for them to have practically no big plays out of their receivers and quarterback, mm -hmm. Uh, real credit. That's why it was such a, a, a an improvement and a great Im a great day to improve for our defense. Damon Craig comes in, uh, opens up with a nice pass. The wind was a real big factor. I don't know that, you know, the wind was made it hard. So maybe that's why their quarterback and our quarterback didn't throw many pretty football. That that's why this pass is held up. This touchdown pass is that he uh, the, he has to come back and make a play on. Well, Damon, I tell you, Damon Damon was in. He was four for four with two touchdown passes uh, uh, for the day, and uh, uh, he just and he is just. Uh, waiting his time but uh, again does a good job behind pat nix and pat nix does a good job uh, ahead of him we're in the fourth quarter now good hit there oh i had that tyrese williams i think he found a home in that secondary what do you think look at this number 22 he'll hit you here's home. their final uh, play of the game and a memorable one for Number Jason four. Bray, one of our freshmen now, one of our freshmen there, true freshman, getting his first interception. That's a good day. And a good job. You know, I noticed the comments their coaches, their players making the paper. You talk about a, a class bunch of guys. They I really talked about that they thought, you know, you know, sometimes when a team comes in and gets beat, uh, they all bad mouth yeah, and yeah, come yeah. out. I, I really am impressed with the way their players comment the paper about the respect they had for the team and, and our players the same for them. It's, it's the kind of class you want players to show uh, and not the trash talk after a game. Very, very classy to play Northeast. We'll be back for the final comment in just a minute. To the final two big games, great traditional games. You go to Athens to play the Georgia Dogs, Coach. Boy, I tell you, and, and, and you know, the tradition of this game and the importance of this game, and no one has to write and tell you about it. Nobody mm -hmm. has to, to build it up. It's there. Uh, the players know it. Uh, their defense is so much better. Boy, their defensive front. This team is, uh, Joe Kahn did a great job. Uh, Ray brought in, I think, an outstanding defensive coordinator who gave us fits at Arkansas. Uh, they're talented. Offensively, they've had a million problems, and no one's gone through more adversity than, than Ray Goff, and the way he's held that program together today, great credit to him, uh, and they ought to recognize that, I think, somehow along these lines of getting mad at coaches. But we got to go beat him. He, he knocked us out last year. We were undefeated. He came over here and tied us. Now, we got to win this game to go to bowl, so I'm after them. Well, uh, we got to win this game. And so it's going to be a great game between two fine teams and probably one of the, the, the classiest traditions there is is the Georgia-Auburn game. You're right. It's the oldest rivalry in the south the auburn network will be on the air at 2 30 saturday afternoon they're all over in green pass set up caught at the 40 up to the 45 to squeeze in midfield down the sideline 40 he's at the 30 he's at the 20 he's at the 10 he's at the 5 he's gone touchdown auburn <laughs>
luck, all the adversity, everything comes for a reason. It comes for a big win like that. It comes for a big win like that. It's a great job, man. I'm so proud, so proud of all you guys, seniors, all the players here. But I'm proud of you players, Swain. Great job, man. Mm -hmm. For everybody. It was, it was a great job, man, a great win. You, you came out there and, and, and people said you couldn't play four quarters or we couldn't, we couldn't win the close games anymore. I mean, you guys, you guys played to win all year. Don't listen to them. Don't ever listen to them. You always played to win. You went out there and did the job. You did the job. We'll, we'll, we'll go home and celebrate tonight. We won't celebrate long, man. Because you got yourself the bowl out of the way, but we got the, we got the championship now. So you got the championship. You got the state championship. You got the state championship now. And just get together. Let's get together and work each other and love each other and have the best game ever next year. Next week. Yeah! Next week. It'll seem like, hey, it'll seem like we like a year after practice, I'm telling you. Shootout in Georgia last night, and Auburn won at 37 to 31. Coach Terry Biden, I know it's tough on young coaches, but I bet you ESPN loved it. I tell you another great TV game. You know, all three years against Georgia, the first year, the last year down the last play this year, every one was one played last night. Well, I guess that's the way it always has been, and why the series is the longest ever, and there's only a couple of games that separate it, but. This was a close game that we won, one we dr desperately needed, and I'm so proud for our football and team. And you can you could tell in the dressing room it was a big game. Oh, War Eagle, the, the War Eagle tear, a lot, <laughs> lot more excitement there. There, it really was. And uh, um, again, that's just a matter of winning that close game. When you lose one, you're so depressed that it's hard to get you know to get back from that. But buddy, it was it was great. I'm so proud of these guys. And uh, it's tough when you're having to go out there and not sure what how much you got to score, and, and your defense is seeing a lot of things. Another week off is something we, we face this year that's, that's critical. Arkansas, Georgia both changed a lot of things on a young, young defense. Let's go in the dressing room now and hear some player comments after the big win. Winning shootouts can be fun. Can well, I'm about too old for that kind of stuff after five years of it. It's, um, it's a great win for us, so I tell you, it, it puts Auburn back in a bowl, and um, it's a great win for the seniors to, to actually uh, be back in a bowl, to be sitting here at seven and three, and, um, you know, it's a good feeling. It's yeah, last week, uh, the coaches got on me, because um, I missed my read. Jesse was the first read last week, and I um, wanted to make sure I got him, and he was open up his head. Your pass, man, they were three or four great blocks. Yeah, I mean, it was, I, I saw him out the corner of my eye. You know, I just knew I had to haul tail, you know, get the end zone, because I feel somebody behind me, so, you know, it's easy, uh, you know, see me run like that before, but, you know, I, I knew I had to get to the end zone. He was running for the fan, though. <laughs> I told him, you might can beat me now. <laughs> he might. Hey, them guys was great. They came out there, and, and they really got after our defense. Um, you know, we, I guess we went in there and reluctantly took them for granted, but uh, them guys did a great job, and their defense throwed a lot of stuff at us, a couple of twists and stuff, but, uh, you know, luckily we, we started picking them things up. Back to Evan next week. It'll be a big game like, like, like always. Uh, uh, I see it being a close game. Uh, I believe uh, the team come out, run the football, control the clock, and play good hard defense and stop the run and win the ball game. The kicking game tonight was really good. You guys did a good job on that. Yes, we changed the, um, the kickoff um, return people. I mean, up front, and it worked out good for us. We oh, gave up some points, but you also had some big plays tonight. Yeah, we gave up a little bit more points than we expected to, but a good win. We had a good win, so we're going to take that win and get ready for next week. A lot of things weren't going right tonight, but, you know, when it got down to the point where it was third and seven, and, and they went forward on fourth and seven, we came together as a defense and stopped it. That whole crowd stayed in the game the whole game. Um, that's what really kept the momentum for them. Um, we could never stop them, um, but when we had to, we did. Now showing the 1996 Toyota. They're the biggest hit of the new model. Okay, over 80,000 at Stanford Stadium as we get into the first half of play. And this was a windy, cold afternoon. Temperatures about the 40s uh, as the game started and they went down as the game went on. Well, the, the, one of the most critical decisions you had to make was how are you going to play the win from the opening game. And we made the right one. We, did, we won the toss, deferred. They had to choose receive. Maybe they should have chose to kick off. We scored 13 points based basically on win. They could the heavy win, and uh, uh, we stopped the defense, stopped them. They couldn't punt very far because they were into a heavy win. Defense critically, I mean, for all the problems we had defensively uh, during the game, they came out, stopped them twice in a row, three and out almost, and we scored 13 get points. The lead, yeah. And at the end of the game, the defense was back, stopping them. It was all in between. They got all the stuff that Georgia put in for the, for the game. There's a third and eight. 
going to go to go check. Go check caught five catches. There's only three or four away from the uh, all-time rest season single record and uh, uh, had a good day as well as uh, the other receivers. And uh, Kevin McLeod from Georgia come through with a bit critical third and three play there. And uh, we, the good thing is offensively, we, we, we challenge our fellows, come out and take the opening drive downfield and score. Yep. Offensive line did good. We go down and take the opening drive. Get a sack. Well, get a sack there. We 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 uh, we tried something different there. They get a sack, but they get a celebration there. If people remember, that was the first celebration rule comeback. It took our drive back down. Then the big guy comes through, makes a great effort to get in that end zone and uh, uh, gets us up seven to nothing. So great opening drive and good you'll, cut right there. Right there, there. great job. 152 right. yards for Stephen last night. Really good. Well, I tell you, when when you can when you can do the when you can get in that eye formation, run him. Uh, and get that kind of yards. You got a good chance you're going to win, but again, you can see when you have a young defense why you have to mix it up. Last night was an example of all the reasons you do a lot of things. There's defense coming through again uh, with a good play. Here's a fourth down play for Auburn, and watch the uh, fumble, and uh, Auburn retains possession. Well, with the win, we were all playing kind of conservatively. There's the big turnover right there, and we get the ball. There's the, the, the special teams playing a good game and giving us the football team. It's like we had all the young guys on the, uh, defense they had all the young guys on offense, and theirs made a few more mistakes than ours did. Nice play by Fred Beasley. The offensive line opened a nice hole there. He also knocked the ball away on that uh, punt return. Oh, I tell you, did a great. He sure did a punt return there. And there's our goal line offense. We scored every time touchdowns. We've never kicked a field goal once getting into the goal line offense. Uh, and uh, and then never and the all made all our short yardages too. It's some critical ones later in the game. Second quarter now. But you'll watch how they're playing their offense. You'll see later on, you'll watch their offensive line as you watch this video. You'll see them not playing the same type. The splits become huge. Uh, like, like, watch them spread them out and spread the offensive line out and uh, defensive line out. Now, they, there's a fell down. Del McGee had a tough tee standing up. He fell down about two or three times. Uh, just a slippery field. A wet field is to the receiver's advantage, not the defender, defensive back. And every, he's so quick, uh, when he'd make a move, he'd, uh, he slipped and fell two or three times, but you can't do that. I mean, it's like when you go throw the ball to our guy, he's got to catch it. Two series later, that's a big, third and five. Big third down play uh, and a catch there <coughs> uh, for Willie Gauthier and Patrick Nixon. Now now we're four wide receivers. We've got, we've got to come out and see if we can. They come back and score so quickly. We said, let's give them a little fast-paced action so we were no huddle, full wide, and we go right down the field and score the score the very next time and uh, that allows you to get their defense doing a lot of adjustments and can't focus on that eye that we get back to later on. Freshman Eric Lowe there with a big catch and a good run after it. We are seeing three and four freshman receivers out here. That was fourth and three, Coach. That was a fourth and three. We, we went for it. It was on the, it was on the uh, maybe plus 35, plus 40, but it was a critical play. Another short yardage. There's Kevin McLeod ripping through there for a big play. Now we first and 10 down on the 13. Here comes play action and a nice uh, pass to Beasley. Well, Beasley caught this little waggle pass out in the sidelines and gets it almost. We had some great runs by the back that went out on the one, but that just means we're going to put in the three, the three tight end offense. And Watch the block on the center here. Boy, look at it. Just, just hit number 99 was supposed to be knocking the nose guard center back. The center knocked him back, and you don't see it on the film, but in the critical fourth and one that wins the game, the same, exact same thing happened by Shannon Robeek. Uh, and those two guards who wedge blocked us the thing. Here's their quarterback. Uh, boy, he really hurt us. That play right there hurt us so bad. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, we couldn't cover that back flat, working out in the flat. And uh, boy, just hurt us badly. They got a touchdown here just before the half and get back in this game. Well, that was what the biggest hurt, the, hurt, the, the worst letdowns we had defensively. We, we gave up a huge, we scored with three minutes left to go up 13. They come right down in three minutes and score about as quick as you can score. And then the second half, when it came out, we had we couldn't stop them. The first three or four series, they score every time. We're scoring also, but it became very frustrating, and they, they and began to move. We'll be back in just a minute. We're nursing the six-point lead, and I guess there's the Auburn Network guys, Coach. There's I, the good guys. I guess by now you had the feeling that this was going to be a shootout. Right down the wire. You, you knew you couldn't stop. You had to eye run. You had to pass. You had to do it all. And we come out uh, again, and we go right back down and get a score right off the bat. Big play, uh, Robert Baker. What you need when you throw sp short pass is for guys like that to make 20-yard gains out of them. And that's what we saw a little bit of Saturday. We saw a screen pass go for 60 and a four-yard hitch go for, for 25. And Here come the block. Here's the screen. Now, this is critical. There's about three blocks. Watch this. You'll see. Boy, you see Leonard Thomas, Thomas. Wrote, and then Robert Baker knocked the last one down, and Fred out ran everybody. Nice when your fullback can run like that. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and boy, you talk about a big play. There was a third and 16. All you're doing is searching for a call that might get it, but probably won't get you in trouble. 
and then all of a sudden we score, go back up 13. We never could get beyond that 13 line. Mm -hmm. That 13 point was just, we couldn't, every time we get there, we go back six. And uh, if you could have gotten to 20 or something like that, you think you might be able to make a difference with them, but you couldn't get it. They continue to drive. They're on the goal line now. Well, this is where you can get a good sack there, good pressure. Uh, they've gone to a more, more wide open offense. Uh, the, uh, Hines Ward is starting to have a good kill. We hold them to a field goal there. Defense was able to hold them. It's almost and a release to hold them to a field goal. That's right. When a team is hot like they were, you just feel good. We got, we'll trade seven for three, which is what we did there, which ended up being some of the part of the game coming. Sets in that pocket so good and hits a wide open receiver over the middle. Here comes the critical mistake that they got uh, got it really tight. Well, what you happen? Patrick's trying to make is this a scramble for mm -hmm. a for a phone? He's trying to make something happen. A fullback, that's the Sheriff fullback, just did not hang on to his block. We had a wide open receiver going for the football, but Patrick and trying to scramble needs to hold that football. But we had a poor block by our fullback right there that cost us to have the uh, sack and the fumble. And again, we just get get one-on-one -on -one coverage. Uh, they, we're not able to play them quite close enough, and uh, uh, they make a great throwing catch. And then there's the draw. Pop in, jump back outside, and again, uh, we're not able to uh, make the plays, and they're, they're fine freshmen. Outruns, there's our freshman, Brian Taylor. So many freshmen out there playing each other. We've got to come out there and decide what to do now. Do we get a really critical drive, and against the wind, too. Oh, I tell you, it was a nice throw. Larrick Lowe catches a five-yard pass and takes it about 15. Well, we got to move the ball. We get down to a short yardage here. Third and two at the 33. Third and two yards, and there's a toss right there. There's a good block by Carl Levine, and Steve Davis takes a short yardage toss. Uh, so reminiscent of Georgia two years ago down there where, where Bostick hit a short yardage sweep for a big play for a touchdown against Georgia two years ago. And here's another, the, another short. There's a, what everybody gets used to see. It's funny. Everybody knows we're going to either sweep, we're going to up the middle, or you're going to do that, but you've got to cover them all, and you don't know which one to, to cover. And, Damon, Damon Craig gets going this year, just throw touchdowns. So your whole job there, you get to go do nothing but throw touchdown passes. Fourth quarter now, it's a 10-point game. Boy, I tell you, just when you think you're having a 10-point game, I, Martavis Houston, 13 tackles, 11 individuals, true freshman there, but he's as much of a veteran as we've got. But each time you stop them, that young Jet team, their offensive line were veterans, that young running back out there scoring again, uh, it's back to the drawing board, 34-31, and it's still not over. Caught us in a blitz and made the big play. Boy, there's a third and eight play. You make on the fingers. It's really the ball, now that you see it, was probably more catchable than you thought. But it's still a tough catch. But Patrick lays it right in there. We have to punt to him. Uh, but you'll see here, I think it's where the turnover is last of this, next, play, uh, yeah. next series. Yeah. The defense got us the ball down down close where we needed a touchdown. We only got the one time I was disappointed in the offense. They, they give us, here's the fumble, turnover, and we get the ball back, but we don't get a touchdown. We just get a field goal. It was the one time we really could have, I thought, Got it back over one touchdown lead, uh, but we didn't get it. Here comes a second and seven this, at the 11. That's one right here where we get a big wide open defender for a touchdown, and they deflect it at the last minute and uh, force it into a field goal. Well, Matt Hawkins, who had a really good night kicking the ball, kicked the field kicked goal. Kicked it right through. So it's a six-point game now, 37-31, and it's really well, interesting you know, from a here on Well, you know, a touchdown, in. only a one-point uh, kick would, would win the game, and so defense really... Wants to need to rise the occasion now, and there's a big sack. Cowboy Marcellus Marcella and, uh, and Scott Stacy, a big sack. I don't know, we had a ton of sacks. But, uh, he scrambles for 10, and then here's a third and six, and they convert it by yeah. a yard. Well, you, you, your defensive, uh, when, you, when you try to blitz those linebackers, that's why we got those sacks. But if you do, you, you force man coverage. Big play by Mark Smith, mm -hmm. and a big loss. Because right down here, they have to make some decisions That puts now. them in a third and eight now. Here comes uh, the two big plays that perhaps won the game for the Third defense. and eight, a little pressure there. Great play, good coverage by Marta I mean, by Martavis Houston. Fourth uh, and eight now. And fourth and eight now. This play can either score and put us down, having to score at the minute, or we can hold the ball. So this is probably the biggest play of the game right here. Boom, we have good coverage, a little bit underneath, a little bit on top and we get the ball. Now the most important offensive drive is the one that didn't score, it's the last one. Six minutes to Six go Six minutes now. left in the game. Uh, we've got to keep their offense off the field. And, 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 and this right here, that offensive line, Steve Davis did that thing right there. Uh, but see, people wonder why you don't be in the eye every time. If we did a six play drive, they were scoring in two plays, two minutes. Big and first down. Big here. pass mixed in with it. Uh, and, and we had a good mix in with it. Third and one now. And There's a big it. third and one. Boy, I tell you, it, hadn't, it, it, it was so close, but we missed the stop to 89. We should have blocked him, but we didn't. And uh, now we've got to make a decision on fourth and one. The whole game's riding. And you see number nine, the 99 got knocked right back. The nose guard knocked right out of there again. Unbelievable for a short yardage to knock him backwards. Uh, and then there's the next play. The next play, 
takes it all the way down, just a share, just a tad away from scoring that one and the other one. Uh, he, he stepped out of bounds, and then they, they say the ground caused the fumble. But that was one that made your heart stop there because, buddy, their, their fans uh, uh, were hoping they'd get a big play. Ray was, and then we're right here. We're trying to decide not to kick the field goal. I saw that Northwestern loss on TV right before the game. Uh, they showed a tape of it where they, 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 lost, well, they lost the snap and lost the game to Miami, Ohio, on the last play of the game. And so that's the catch they shouldn't make. We knew, they had to, we knew the clock was going to start. As soon as they lined up, they either had to throw another pass or they had to clock down the ball. Four seconds now. And you knew to throw two of those. This one, even if it didn't go in the end zone, see that play, even if that play had been caught, it couldn't have done it. So it was the right thing to do. And then Marte Houston just runs out of bounds, so they can't fumble the ball in the game. The clock runs out. And, you know, that, we've had five games that are one loss in the last seconds of the game, three of them this year. It's, it's just the kind of kind of game it was. And uh, uh, great credit to Georgia. They played hard. They, they played did. through a lot of they adversity. But we needed this win. Our players played hard, too. I'm proud for them. We'll be back in just a minute. Tiger fans have been doing the bragging. It was a wild one last night on the Plains. Good game for both quarterbacks, former high school teammates at Etowah. Patrick Nix, 259 yards and a couple of touchdowns, plus a big completion over the middle to Robert Baker on a third down, Auburn's game-winning drive after the Tide had taken the lead in the fourth quarter. Now, for a guy making only his second college start, Bama's Freddie Kitchens looked more like a fifth-year senior, hooking up with his old high school teammate, Todrick Malone, for 52 yards and a touchdown. Freddie threw for 300 yards and almost, almost threw the game-winning touchdown pass right here. In the final seconds, Curtis Brown out of bounds by about six inches. Four straight incompletions for Bama. Patrick Nix takes the snap, runs out the clock, and the Auburn Tigers beat the Alabama Crimson Tide 31-27. I've become an old man awful quick, and, and you know, in my, my years here, we've, we've had so many close ones, and, yeah, I mean, what can you say? Auburn, Alabama being a blowout, I mean, you know, it don't happen very often, and, um, you know, we, we, we did what we had to do to win, and um, offensively and defensively, we did what we had to do to win, and um, you just, the feeling is unbelievable. We came down here wanting to win the game, and we fell short. I thought the team, you know, gave it a total effort. You know, uh, the whole team played well, played together, and, and we just came up short at the end. Wild game, though, and uh, enjoyable for fans, if you, uh, that is, if you didn't have a, a team you were pulling for. Check out the top ten, Nebraska, Ohio State, and Florida. They're the same way it's always been, but Northwestern has leapfrogged Tennessee because of the Vols' lackluster performance against Kentucky, Florida State, Notre Dame, Colorado, Texas, and Kansas State right up the top ten. And top 25, Auburn up to 16, Alabama down to 21, Arkansas down to 23. There's been a lot of speculation about Gene Stallings' future at Alabama. A lot of Crimson Tide fans believe Stallings is thinking about retiring to his ranch in Texas. After last night's game, I asked the Bama coach if he'll be back in 96. Well, I'm under contract, obviously, and, and uh, you know, I, I've said this a number of times. I'm sort of tired right now, and I want to evaluate my performance and evaluate uh, what all we've done and and hopefully uh, we'll wait for the appeals to see what happens and then we'll go from there. For the second straight week, the Dallas Cowboys played in the big NFL. The Bama game seems to have taken forever to get here, but one fine hand, what a sight to see. Auburn held off Alabama at the very end. The Tigers win this year's Iron Bowl. Some thoughts from the Auburn locker room. Victory. It was a great team victory for us, and uh, I'm so proud for our seniors. It's what they, they needed. Uh, and that we're gonna all get some rest. He came back out the fourth quarter and uh, Coach Trinket put it on our shoulder. He said it's just up to y'all. Either, either y'all gonna get them or they gonna get y'all. And if I, I just think it'll be this big. It was more than I expected. You know these fans, these fans really love this game. Yeah. We felt really anxious to go out there and play, and you know and then it, the stadium's never been this loud. You know it's just it's overwhelming. You know what the fans are like. Where, when you looked up, when did you know? Was it about the seven yard line? Well, you? I knew it. I knew it was going to end zone as soon as I crossed the line of scrimmage. There was nobody in sight. Um, the, the closest guy was on the other side of the hand. So. I'm not ready for it to be over, but you know, it is. And it's time for somebody else to have the experience right now. You know, uh, I'm definitely not, not leaving here with anything, any regrets. Gene Stallings probably isn't going to leave Alabama with any regrets, but is he going to leave? That's a question Stallings clearly doesn't like. Some thoughts from the Bama locker room. Gene, whether or not we won it or whether or not we lost the game, you know, I wouldn't have anything. Our guys came back the second half, played a lot better, a lot harder, with the exception of that one drive. I think we went in and out every time, if I'm not mistaken. Freddie did a great job tonight. You know, he came out there, he took charge of the huddle. You know, he made plays. You know, we... yeah, I was open early, but.
but uh, you know, uh, you know, unfortunately, unfortunately, he didn't uh, you know, let it go soon enough. But uh, you know, that, that's what happens. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you come up with a with a big play, and sometimes you don't. Uh. It takes, all, it, it takes all of us, don't it? Good job, baby. It, 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 it don't take an offense. It don't take a defense. It takes all of us. Team. It takes a team and a team of people that won't quit. You know, that's the greatest thing. I've never been around a group of players at Auburn who ain't been in a game. And you win them. And I'm proud of you. you, 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 you that's one of the great ones, I'm going to tell you. That one of the great ones. I, there's never been a group of seniors at Auburn that deserve it any more than y'all. Football review yesterday, Auburn 31, Alabama 27. Coach Terry Biden, I'm glad this is over because I thought your wife Cheryl might have that baby early the way things have been going the last two weeks. And I tell you, ESPN ought to pay Auburn. The games right. they've had of right. Auburn on TV have excited the nation, uh, I think, and uh, this one's sweeter than all the rest. And, uh, the, the Alabama game it will always be sweeter than the rest, uh, uh, but only when you win. Uh, maybe the most exciting game setting of the year yeah. in the country. Well, I, I don't think, I think we have something at Auburn that, that, that is very special. Uh, we have what everybody in the country wants, it's just a bit of college football as it always used to be. And as we have the opportunity at Auburn to always keep it small town, college town, state that has no, no real other things to distract from college football, and I think the, the, the University and the City of Auburn present it as well as anybody could possibly do. It was a great day. Now, we want to talk to seniors on this uh, final program. We missed several. We missed Brian Northcutt. We missed Toby Anderson and Eric Rebels and Auburn's great kicker, Matt Hawkins. But we did get to talk to the rest of them, including Jason Miska. We finally got a word or two from Jason. <laughs> Jason? Yes. Tell me how you feel. Uh, um, mixed emotions. Relieved that it's over, and I'm just happy that we won. I'm real glad for the team. A lot of people, players on this team deserve a victory like this. Y'all had them all away, didn't you? Yeah, it was secure. <laughs> we just playing with the fans a little bit. <laughs> you know, we finally adjusted, and, you know, for, we, we, we scored when we had to, and uh, defense held on when they had to. Well, you guys have been fun to watch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a lifelong dream, and last year I tried to fulfill it, and I didn't do it, and uh, we came out, and we got a little flustered at first that the offense came through and we came through and it's the greatest feeling of my life. No, not a better way to go out of seniors. Victorious over Alabama. I thank our fans to um that's what um they sun jobs as we use that energy. They help us all through the game. Well I am impressed with that center job. I'm telling you this is a senior. What's your major? Two five five and one my freshman year. Um regroup coach Ter coach Terry came out everybody wanted to play we regroup listen to the man you've been fun to watch thanks for all the members I'm, I, I'm, I'm glad I was I'm glad I'm, I'm very glad that I came here you know the people here so they just they just made me feel good and if, I, if I had a chance to play for somebody else I wouldn't do it but, you know, I had to be all the people I tip my head out to Alabama and they fans and stuff because they played us very tight and stuff and I had to tip my head out to the fans because hey, without them and stuff it couldn't have happened you know we did what we had to do to win and against Alabama that's all that matters you find your pop in the stands yeah I found my pop in the stands and my mom and my, my wife and my brother and um, you know it was a uh, uh, it's been a long road with all of us all you know every one of us have been through a lot and um, they've been right beside me through every bit of it and, and you know and uh, them and, and Jesus have been right there through thick and thin and um, you know and I'm just so thankful for them and so thankful for, for that the Lord has blessed me with a, such a family and a relationship with him we had the greatest fans in the world I mean they, they just stood behind us I think that was the key to the game with the uh, fan support and like I said we had the greatest fans we went to the pay rally I think they just really tune this team up to, just to really see how great fans we have in the tight wall. We just got everybody pumped up, and I'm just excited. I'm just ready to go celebrate. All right, let's go. Let's go. Line it up. Oh. 
As we get into the game, uh, the Tiger Walk first. It began uh, around 2.30 in the afternoon, and uh, look at the faces, Coach. These guys are ready to play. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know if the crowd was bigger, but it, it was the most uh, intense or exciting Tiger Walk since I've been here. And, and so we got to be careful. It's getting on with the crowd. I really felt the small children had the problem there, but it's unbelievable. It, you tell, the players were even more inspired from that Tiger Walk, and, of course, the fans, uh, uh, it's, hard, it's hard to beat the entire Auburn family at, at Auburn when they're pumped up like that. Emma moved the ball and then uh, got you backed up on a punt after they uh, were stopped finally and uh, now they have field position. Again. Yeah, they were going to play a field position game to start with and got us backed up on their punt. We started out on one. We had to just run it and then punt down. But our defense held a couple of downs until we could get going offensively. Here come the fake reverse. Big play, but there's the fumble. Big recovery by Larry Melton, stripped by Dale McGee. And... Uh, Boy, that just got things rolling. The first turnover of the game, and there weren't going to be many others following after that from Alabama, but that was big. Alabama has uh, lived off turnovers this year, and they, were, they got none. Yes, well, that's how you win a big game like that. There's a pass interference from Andy uh, Fuller. We jump to the four wide out. Got an offside here, but the play is still alive. A little different play we added on. That's really not a, that's really a shuffle pass for yardage-wise, but those were some big runs. Mm. We'd have had a little better. We had about 40 yards on that one play that was was called passing yards. There's an ad lib. The front side was covered. That's not a designated play right there. That's, that's a quarterback and a senior tailback doing something on their own. Uh, and uh, that's why, you know, that's why you get that touchdown. We had some experience at the key position. Auburn was working hard for their scores, and Alabama was getting the big play on theirs early. Boy, I tell you, I mean, Etowah, Etowah is the big winner in this game. Yeah. You're talking about uh, Patrick Nix, uh, Freddie Kitchens to Todrick Malone. Yes. All on the same screen. There's Robert Baker, one of the exciting players in college football, you know, true freshman, uh, on a big third down and six that we made the first down there to keep this drive going. Good protection. And the true freshman there, Eric Lowe, who's probably is just a smooth, smooth receiver. We lost two receivers the first half. Call play here? Yeah, calls. That was a quarterback draw. Uh, we, ca we gave them, we, we really put a lot of new things in for Alabama, and it took them a, a half to really get it under control. Good surge by the line. Good surge by the line, and uh, Damon gets him another scoring touchdown. But we, we put a lot of new formations in and plays, and before uh, uh, they could make their adjustments, we were able to score, I think, 20, 24 points at halftime. And there's a get what speed, I'm telling you. That's, uh, Their senior wideouts have really been great players. For they really are great players. They just caught us. Uh, they got it caught us inside and stretched the corner, and uh, we had, I mean, he had the great speed. Second so. quarter now, Auburn driving. And really, this is the one thing, if, 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 uh, if teams are going to score a lot on you, you cannot sit back. What a great little job there. Uh, pass it to Eric Lowe again. And uh, when they thought they had him boxed in, he keeps the drive going again. But when you can't, when you're having a hard time stopping people at some point in the season or a game, this little uh, mixture, look at this great play, Patrick Nix again to another senior. Uh, you, know, uh, or, you know, those big plays in the first half are, are what separated. Uh, uh, us in the, in, the, in the total victory. Defense holds them, but Auburn can't move. This is their second possession after the Auburn Great score. play there, tackled by uh, Anthony Harris. Uh, defensively, if you had to take away those two long, long touchdown plays, mm -hmm. they play a perfect first mm -hmm. half against mm -hmm. Alabama. Perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, because Auburn they can't move, but you back them up here inside the five. Again, uh, Hawkins has been very, very good at kicking the, uh, into the goal line. He has been one of the best I've ever seen at down, getting the ball to down inside the 10. Uh, which is a field position uh, thing. Now they come out and have to run. Great job by the defense there to hold them. You're going to get a field goal out of this field position. Too. Well, when four. They, had, they, they had to be stopped here. Here's their little quarterback rollout that they like to do to run the football, but we read it. I'm pretty sure the coaches were able to recognize a formation there and put the defense in the right defense to make that play. So you begin at the 46 of Alabama. Nice play there. Tyrone Goodson getting open to the outside. Patrick just biding his time. They're one of the great rush teams, pass rushing teams, and got a few sacks, but we, when they didn't get to him. They're Steven Wren breaking the tackle and getting it down close. Want to get a touchdown. Touchdown board could have just put you out there about, four, I think, 13 or 14 ahead. Couldn't get it. We got the field goal. Go up by 10. To go up by 10. So it's uh, been a great first half, 24-14. Take away the two long plays, and you would really be in good shape. But uh, that's, that's, that's I mean, if down. you had told me there were going to be 38 points scored in the first half, or we'd get 24 against Alabama in the first half, uh, uh, I'd say you're crazy. But uh, it was an amazing game. But uh, there's a lot more excitement to come. Uh, you can bet on that. We'll be back with you. <laughs>
when the week is... Uh, this week, uh, your questions for Coach Brown, I'm sure there will be many, and it, of course, has been moved to Wednesday night because of Thanksgiving. So remember, Tiger Talk this week is Wednesday at 7 around the state. You mentioned Coach Jordan. Uh, one of his expressions was, we had a sinking spell. I believe that's a pretty good description of the third <laughs> well, quarter. Well, third Coach. quarter, they did a great job, Alabama, I mean, in reacting to our changes. Mm -hmm. We did some things offensively that they were able to adjust and stop. Defensively, we put our defense on the field too long because we couldn't get a first down. And there was a spell there where you really, I mean, you, every Auburn person, including me, you, you began to oh, get nervous. Uh, as they came back and actually took the lead uh, because of Alabama's ability to make adjustments uh, and to control us in the third quarter. They go in to score there. Now the score is tied. They had a field goal and uh, the touchdown in the third quarter. There were, a lot, there were a lot of three and outs. You yep. know, Phil, there was a lot of three and outs on offense and the defense. Just could, we couldn't get these all through. Great tackles. Martavis Houston there. Uh, boy, you know, Jason Miska right there come back and leading us to the big game. The seniors are going to lead to the big game. There were six or seven true freshmen playing at times during this ball game. Third and seven coming in. It looks like for all the world they're going to get another touchdown here, but the defense holds. Jason makes a big play on fourth down. Uh, third down. Third down, sorry, forces them to a field goal, which ultimately decides it's still a touchdown. Mm -hmm. and, they're, and, and ultimately this that is the difference big. in the ball game. You're right. As we go back and score, uh, it ultimately, the, the points there were the points we had to hold them to. You never know at what point in the ball game a play may determine the outcome. That play as well as all the fancy ones. Was this a momentum swing here? Oh, yeah. We could, we were nothing going, and all we needed was something good to happen, maybe a field position in this kid every time he touches the ball. I mean, sure, the Arkansas opening kickoff was disastrous to him, but look at the plays he makes with mm -hmm. the confidence that he has. And uh, Now we come back and... Uh, Here's and a third and nine. They won't get any bigger than this one. Yeah, that's a Baker. That, that play was called 178 Baker. I drew it up in the dirt, uh, <laughs> drew, I drew it up in the dirt Tuesday at practice, and Tommy remembered it during the game. I had forgotten about it, and he called it. And uh, 178 Baker. And Thank it, uh, you, brother. Yes, it worked <laughs> out perfectly. And there's the... Oh, we've been running. The belly was a second down play. We did not want to run on second down, but they were rushing the passer on second down, and we ran that little belly play underneath the upfield rush, and Fred has the talent and speed to make it a score instead of just get a first down. Yeah, he's a great one. 31-27 now, and it's holding the rest of the game. Well, momentum changed. Momentum was all Alabama in the second, third quarter, and it just changed. Look at the Andre Miller in his fine senior year. He's had so much adversity injury uh, during his time here to come back, and boy, a great job. Scrambles out kitchens, I'm telling you, I, I, we don't want to face, we're going to be facing him a long time. He's Charles a Dorsey making his first How about start. Charles Dorsey goes from scout team to uh, all Second Auburn team. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, James Lofko goes from going home uh, <laughs> to uh, going down on the field. Because we didn't tell people, but uh, Tuesday Brumbaugh hurt his knee real bad in practice. Tried to get ready, but couldn't. We didn't want to release it to anybody, so they would know we had almost nobody. Third and four. Third and four, and oh, boy, that gum, uh, Dorsey and those freshmen, I could list about it six of them there. It's scary to mention. This could make him in a hole. Fourth and three coming right here. Big play. Fourth and three. I mean, there's some big plays. Defense just really came through. Great job there. Tyrese Williams, who was a receiver, true freshman. Uh, 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 look at that. Martavis Houston, true freshman. Ryan Taylor. Run the clock. 627 left in the Boy, game. Boy, big play to get a first. All we're trying to do is run that clock, run that clock, and uh, you're going to see a play that just crushed us. We have, we, we're working on so hard Finally pop them. I mean, it goes all, but the game's over because we're going to put the ball down there tight and have a chance. We're going to ice this dead game, game on the 10-yard line, but they called holding. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, you hate to see it that late in the game. They drive now as the seconds tick away. That's the first Boy, down. Is it a game of inches or what? They, they catch the ball beautifully, throw and catch play, but about a half a step out of bounds. Second down. Last three plays, there's the dead game. Uh, short pass that very well... Uh, 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 defended up underneath. There's the deep ball there that's thrown away, covered. The noise is deafening oh, right I mean, into I mean, the future. There, there was no ability to, to, to uh, do anything but just line up and chunk it. And uh, it's over now. Over now. And again, that's a credit to those players, that young defense that we had uh, and the fans. And, mm -hmm. I mean, driving, I mean, I was serious earlier when I said Sid Jordan, he, he used to say, and people told him about it, make them drive into the student section. The kids or the, the students, the, the the noise will cause them to, be, to disarray. And by getting uh, the the uh, coin toss, you were able to, to set work up that it situation. out in that way. And you want to do that, and uh, so it's a great win. I, I mean, a great elation. I, I have appreciation I have to to, to uh, uh, for our seniors and, and for us to go out again uh, beating Alabama at Jordan Hare. You look a little tired, Coach. I'm we'll tired. be back in just a minute. <laughs> Planning a big uh, bowl special.
Uh, Coach uh, Bowden will join me on a live special from Auburn once the bowl date is determined, who, where we're going and who we're playing. And uh, there will be publicity on the time. It will be on the Sports South Network over the southeast. We'll uh, have publicity on the date and time for that. That ought to be a hoot, Coach. Well, it should be. Again, the key is to, is to, is to organize your time so that you prepare to win a ball game. Don't take this opportunity to go play and not play well, but also organize so you can have a good time. Our fans, we all have been through a lot last few years. We all need to go to some bowl together. Every Auburn people, let's go together and players and fans alike have a good time. Now, you're going to consult the, the old man. Well, my dad, uh, I tell you, I hate to say he keeps the old man, but he's got an NCAA record for consecutive bowl wins. He holds the NCAA record. I'm not going to try to invent a way to do it. I'm just going to go say, send me your itinerary. I'm going to copy that one because I think that must be a pretty good itinerary. And this will be a busy time in the next few weeks, I guess, for recruiting and all that. December 1st, we could be on the road. We're, we're already talking to some of the top players. We've had three national televised ESPN games, one, two out of three. The last one went down the wire. Nationally, now you start to hit on these people. We, we, ESPN is covering us live. We, could, we should mention also next week on uh, game day, there's going to be a special feature. Uh... I was wired the whole week on ESPN. They wired me from the flight back from the Georgia game. I was videoed and wired all week long, and ESPN is going to do a special on Auburn and on game day, game week preparations for this game, and thank goodness we won. <laughs> Next Saturday at 10.30. We've had fun this year. I hope you have, and we will see you on that special sometime in the month of December, so be sure and join us then. Thanks. Coach Bowden's apparel provided by The Locker Room. to the University of Alabama to Coach Stallings' office after a 31-27 uh, to 27 loss at Auburn. Coach, a very tough football game. Well, it was a, it was a hard-fought game. I'm, I'm really pleased with the effort that the players gave. Now, now they played hard. We, we gave up some plays, and there was uh, three or four opportunities where we had to make a play, and we didn't do it. Uh, but before we do get started, I would like to congratulate Auburn. I thought they did a good job and had a good year, and, and Terry and his staff uh, need to feel good about that win. I... I felt good about the way we played, and obviously I'm, I'm hurting about the results of the game. Well, it was a very good comeback, too, especially in the second half, which we'll see. But yeah, we had, uh, you know, we, we scored some points early, but then we gave up more points, but then uh, uh, we pretty much dominated the clock and everything else the uh, second half, where, where we didn't do a very good job with it the first half. And, and we completed some passes and running game, but the uh, fumble uh, hurt us, the missing a field goal hurt us. Uh, Missing the fourth down, play it through. Uh, but anyway, that's that's what the game's all about. Here it's a, it's a beautiful crowd. Gorgeous day. Yeah, the the, uh, the, the crowd uh, was into it. Uh, our players were able to hear the snap down without any problem. Here they are kicking the ball off. And, and we did it. That's Patrick Caper turning that. We did a pretty good job. As you'll see Marcel West especially a little later. Here we open up the, the game with a little fake and a roll and throws it back to the tight end. Their defensive man made a nice play, and, and, and you know, that's one of the plays we'd like to have had back, because maybe if they'd have thrown it to 38, well, we got started a little bit better. He is throwing the ball down into uh, Curtis Brown. Curtis saw four or five passes in the game. Feel badly for the seniors that they weren't yeah, able they to win that one. Yeah. Uh, here we are getting trapped. I think we were trapped like four times. He gets out of this one, but I think we were trapped like four times in the first half. We're doing a lot better job in that area than the second half. Right, only one trap the entire second half. Boy, this, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, old Hayden Stockton did an outstanding job. I think he averaged like 46 yards. Here's the first punt that we, we received the ball. We carried out. We punted. it. We got them backed up on around the three-yard line. We hold them, and, and we get the ball coming back in pretty good field position. Uh, Davis, number 48, and a good running back for them. A Beasley, the fullback. Anyway, we stopped them. We got the football. Here we come back and we, we get a good run. And we're taking that ball down and we fumble it right there. Ball's in about the 30-yard line or so when we fumbled it. And it was a big turnover. It was actually the only turnover uh, in the game. But we were still minus in the turnover department. Really pretty amazing to go a whole football game with one turnover between the two. Yeah, yeah, and both, both, and as many passes as we saw. That's thought. right. We threw a 40 some odd, and they threw you know, 38 or something. Here they make a nice little shuttle. We, we had no containment on the backside. We were offsides anyway. 
That's a good tackle there uh, by Bryant, number 25. And there goes 73 yards here and uh, get a score. Yeah, there. and then right here, we, we come off of a man. They had a pretty well designed play. Both backs are going in the same direction, and, and we came off of one of them, and their quarterback made three or four plays like that that made the difference in the game. Now watch what Marcel West is doing his kickoff. He's just doing better and better. This is an area of our game that, that is, is improving. It really is. He brings this ball out to around the 43, 44 yard line. Gives us excellent field position. As you see, we'll come back in just a minute and, and get some points right here. Great throw and catch for Todrick. He just pretty well takes it away from the defender. And, and that puts us back on the board. Well, it's one of those situations where that 44 yard kickoff return puts you in a position yeah. to do anything you want. That really did. And here's a, a replay of that particular pass. He's got good protection. Throws the ball, uh, lofts it up in the air, and, and uh, Todrick makes an out there. Their, their man had it covered right. fairly well. He just went for the ball, missed it, and Todrick caught it. And then you see he'll come back in just a minute and score on a running play. Well, he winds up with seven catches for 106 yards in the game, and as you mentioned, that 59-yard run that's coming up. Here they are, the score is 7-7, still in the first quarter, and, uh, and uh, Beasley comes out there and makes another nice throw. Uh, I mean, Nick uh, makes a nice throw. He made several really key throws, and I thought one of the best ones was in the fourth quarter when he hit the his quarterback draw, did a nice play on this, gets the ball on down in the scoring territory. And most of the time when they've gotten it down there this year, they come away with touchdowns. They run a quarterback sneak, and their line just puts that ball on, uh, moves our defensive line back a little. And anyway, it's 14-7. But then we come right back and score again. That's right. Uh, here we are. This is Todrick Malone. We put this play in this particular week. Breaks the tackle right there. Got a good block right there from the fullback. And he takes this 50 or 60 yards. And, and now it's 14 14 again. And once again, you had a 33 yard kickoff return. It gives you great field position to start this uh, quick drive. That's right. Here's a replay on that. Get two or three pretty good blocks uh, on this play. That's 32 inch, uh, 37 times and making a pretty good block right there and sort of shaking him free. And uh, Todd just got good speed and, and, and he broke into that secondary like that. I didn't think anybody was going to catch him. Not many folks will. No, and that was an excellent comeback. We matched the points, uh, but then we had a little lull and they got a few points. And you'll see in a minute when we go in uh, the half, we were behind a little bit. Did you ever dream, Coach, that uh, it would be 14-14 at the end of the first quarter? Well, no, not really. I mean, uh, we got ours uh, on long. They, they sort of drove theirs down. They came off of a, a sort of a broken play to get some of it. But it'll happen in games like this. Well, we're all tied at 14 apiece after the first quarter. The second quarter is coming up next. Peace. One of, the, one of the officials got injured in the game, and I hated that. I think he probably got a cartilage or maybe yeah. even a ligament there. And uh, I, I thought the officials were on top of the game and, and really did a good job with it. Uh, here's, here they are coming, but I do hate to see uh, a man did get it. Here we come off of the man again. This has happened to us two or three times this year. Uh, it happened to us in the Arkansas game, and we lost that one. And we came off of a man, the quarterback started scrambling. Great pressure right here. This is a nice play. He had to come back to get the ball. That defensive back flipped just a little bit, and he turned the ball up the field, and, and that's the first thing. It's a nice little game that they just pop right Right, in. right. And you've got to give him credit. Mm -hmm. I mean, that quarterback made a nice play, and the tight end came back for the football. That was a nice strong pass. We didn't put much pressure on him at that particular time. But anyway, we held him, and they kicked the field goal, and, and that puts him ahead 10. I mean, your guys come right back with a pretty good drive here. Unfortunately, no points. Right. Uh, we take the ball right down, and it could have been very easily uh, one of the key plays of the game and, and because of the way it affected us a lot of points. Uh, we threw the ball on 45. Great uh, throwing catch right there. Tony Johnson had tied in and, and dislocated his shoulder on that particular play and was not able to come back. And here we are putting the ball down on the 24-yard line. And, Ordinarily, we'll make that one, but for the past two or three weeks, we, we haven't been quite as good in that area. You came back and kicked them later. Uh, but anyway, that puts us behind 10 going into the half. And, and uh, I, I really I didn't feel all that badly at the half. I felt like we could make an adjustment or two and could come back and, 
and get the game back under control. And you did that. You you must right. have been busy at halftime. Well, I I wasn't, but our coaches yeah. uh, was busy. But um, well, we go we go to the halftime, uh, and uh, it's about to change at Auburn. Stay right with us. Alabama kicking off, and coach uh, very good defense on the first possession here. Right, that wasn't quite as good a kick as we've been getting. Uh, Watts kicked the ball out of the end zone uh, two or three times. Mm -hmm. so they they do an excellent job on bringing that one back. They start this one off uh, about the 50. They deferred, and then and that gives them the ball starting to take a nice pressure right there. But Ralph stayed, and Ralph made <coughs> several nice. <clears throat> plays black than 44 made so anyway yeah, we held them they kicked the football uh we're taking it and we're going right on back with it. 11 Marcel play west is getting better and better he caught that pass and he's playing <clears throat> with the ball pretty well he is throwing it out to the edge we're taking the ball right on down the field by the way kitchens winds up 19 out of 43 for 302 yards and a touchdown in this right here. yeah he's throwing the ball out uh, to marcel again marcel's got just excellent speed. And he, he's just going to get better and better. That's 29, Ben Swillen. We're taking the ball right on down the field. Here we are breaking the ball out to the outside. And the ball, we got the ball right down close to the goal line. Just and right here, we miss a block right there. Guy comes back. We're gonna, it's going to be a touchdown. Mm -hmm. he, but he just has time to throw it. But anyway, we come away with field goal. And that's the difference in four points right there. But here in the in the third quarter, you begin to to keep the football for a while. You didn't have it a whole lot in the first no, half of the game. No, we had six first down the first half. We had uh, 16 seconds. Mm -hmm. Here he is coming out. Nobody was open. They were doubling the wide receivers and pulled the ball down. I think he ran for six or six five yards. Brady Kitchen's making a, a pretty big play there. And he's going to come back and make he another one. He again in, in just a few minutes. And, and make some more yardage. There he is, tucking it down and bring that ball on out. You know, we got away from the running game a little bit. When you do, uh, even though we had 475 yards total offense, we still lost the football game. We were throwing the ball out to Todrick Malone. I think Todrick caught six or seven passes in the game. Quarterback sneak, and we put it on in. And now, we, you know, we picked up 10 points. That's right. Uh, we got 10 plays, 65 yards. That's that right. Score. Now it's 24-24. And uh, things begin to look a little better. Well, they're uh, all tied up as we go to the fourth quarter. And we've got the final 15 minutes right after these messages from our sponsors. With the football, and about to go ahead. Yeah, it's 24-24. And we've uh, thrown the ball out to Patrick Cape. And, and uh, we, we did get the ball into the tight end two or three times this ball game. Something that we hadn't been doing. Uh, very much up. Here we are throwing the ball out to Curtis and, and they get the ball on down. So now we've got the ball inside the 30. Uh, nice run. Yeah, it little. is. Uh, Dennis Rowland, in fact, it looked like he was going to score. Yeah, he's down the field blocking for him. Anyway, we, we get bogged down just a little bit and end up kicking the field goal. And this puts us ahead three. <clears throat> I mean, and, and, and I'm thinking that maybe this is going to be you know, the difference in the ball. And uh, here, though, give Auburn credit. They come back in a five-play drive and take it in for it. They really do. Yeah. They, they, you'll send them in on third down, and if this is it right here. This is a key, key play. We just, it's a game of inches sometimes, but nearly touched it, and then the next play, uh, they score. This is Beasley taking the ball in. And actually, it was the second play after that. Right. Uh, but that third and nine was a, was a key, key play for them. But anyway, it's still four points, and... And I feel like that uh, the way we're moving football, we're going to come back and get a touchdown. Well, three minutes to go here, and you do a great job of getting <coughs> yeah, it on down yeah, the field. Curtis Brown running with the ball again. And you see we got it on down into the uh, area that uh, now is good fast. We're going to put it in that end zone. Here he throws, oh, that was the fourth down play. And uh, we had a back that uh, he could have made the decision on going to Chargers or going to the back. But anyway, we get the ball back. Uh, uh, we hold them defense did an excellent job and there we are throwing the ball and tried to try to get out of bounds didn't make a first down stop the clock just a little bit uh gives us a chance to go ahead and do something balls on the 40 throwing the ball out there and hey they're moving it right on down to the 48 uh you know we're beginning to play a little bit better <clears throat> looking for somebody to throw it to and get the ball over here to marcel there he is got that ball inside the 35 and and stopped it again, and then watch this. And this is how close the game is right here. 
great catch right there by Curtis. And I guess he was out. Maybe six or eight inches yeah. at the most. It was so very close. Yeah, the official was right on top of it, and he saw it. But anyway, we got four shots at it uh, here in the end zone, and, and we let this one fail a little bit. And uh, that's the end of the game. Well, that is the end of the football game, and Coach, you said it before, your seniors, uh, you felt bad for them, but th those, that group of seniors gave you a lot of great they wins. They did, and they played hard in this game. I mean, I, I feel very, very badly that uh, we lost the game, but the guys played hard, and that's, that's about all I can really ask them to do. I wish somewhere along the line I would, was able to help them a little bit more get through this game, but uh, they, they've had a, a good career, and now we'll just have to wait and see what's going to happen on on uh, the appeal process, and, and we'll go from there. Well, and we'll talk about what's coming up next, but right now let's go off the field as Dean Tanner tells us how the University of Alabama is helping state highway officials prevent traffic.